that we left out of here covering was the title problem. The titles are colorable and for colored people. So get your Black's Law dictionaries out and look up the word color. C-O-L-O-R. And you two don't have a black, huh, babies? So let me get y'all mine. Just keep in mind that on occasion I'm gonna be running over there to get it back. Colored or colored? Oh, no. They had to go get that blessing. By the way. Oh, yeah. Don't let me, don't let me forget that. It's off topic at the, moment, at the moment, but I'll get there. But somebody remind me, because I've had a couple of people tell me to share blessed with you guys. Thank you. Because too many people say, oh, have a blessed day. Or, bless you. Bless, bless. And uh, it is so it is a bit of a problem. Okay, right here. I'm not covering it right now because it's really not the topic. And if I get into it, it might take us somewhere off the topic. But well, there'll be a point when it would be appropriate, but it's not in my notes to cover, so I may very well forget unless they keep reminding me. Okay, so color or colorable. Who has found that? Who has a loud mouth that wants to read it, or do you guys want to wait for me to read it? Okay, you have it ready? We're going to start with color, and then we're going to do um, color of both. Ready? Mm -hmm. Color. An appearance, semblance, or similar cum proof. Simulacrum. Simulacrum, thank you. As distinguished from that which is real. Stop. Back it up. We can say that again, that last part. That and which is colored is distinguishable from what? What is real. So, one of the first things they did for our people when they let us, when they came out of the Reconstruction era, was put up these signs that said colored over here and white over here. Mm -hmm. As soon as you started falling for the color game, that is when you started being removed from that which is real. And at some point, our people were identified and classified as people that were colored people. People that are colored, and you know what? Oh, it is there, are not real. So remember I told you when we were here, as Americans, we were OK, or our Moroccans. When we got to Indians, which is the contraction for Indigogians, we were OK. When we got to natives, that was a problem. Colored was a problem. Negroes is a problem. Black is another color, so that's still a problem. These titles that we are going by now have you with a problem with your nine-tenths rule. Nine-tenths of the law, the possession rule. Remember, possession is nine-tenths of the law. If your title is all wrong, you don't have the proper title to even go in and try to stand on the strength of your title and even attempt to go against an antagonist. Do you understand? Which leaves you in a position that the only thing you can do is start to fight from the position of your antagonist's weaknesses, as opposed to fighting from the position of your strengths. So, colored, continue, it's not real. Read some more. A prima facie or apparent right. It's an apparent right. You appear to have rights, but when you're colored, you have no rights. Continue. Hence, a deceptive appearance. A deceptive. plausible, assumed exterior concealing a lack of reality. Now, people, how many people do you know that at some point have classified themselves as colored, even if you have to go back to your great-grandparents. Now, based on what their dictionary says in law, if you're colored, you are not real, and you are not based in reality, and you only have an apparent right. You don't have any real rights. But again, I'm going to get to that in a minute. You don't want rights anyway. When you go into court, you better not go in there talking about, I have my rights, and you're violating my rights. So if you're saying you have rights and you're discussing rights, the judge will sit there laughing in your face. And I'm going to show you why in a few minutes. Uh, is there anything more? Let me see if there's anything more I want from there. Because there may not be anything more I want from there. There's a lot. 
week's Bible. Yeah, finish reading the rest. A disguise or pretext. Now, right next to that, it says, see colorable. What did I tell you to do anytime one of these dictionaries tells you to see something? Go see. Go see. So go see colorable. Colorable. That which is in appearance only and not in reality, what it purports to be, hence counterfeit. Okay. Fame. Hold on one second. Remember we were talking yesterday about the privateers that get out of the cruiser to come and determine whether or not your nationality is what it purports to be. Those are the words they use, right? Okay. For those of you that had the book and looked it up. What did they just say? Read that part again. That which is in appearance only and not in reality, what it purports to be, hence counterfeit. So the privateers exit their vessel and they come to determine whether or not you have the proper nationality, whether or not your nationality is what it purports to be. And when it does not be what it purports to be, you get problems. Is there anything additional that we need to cover there? Having the appearance of truth. It appears to be true, but it's not true. And what did we say last night? If it's not true, it's what? A lie. A lie. If it's new, it's not true. So if it's not true, it must be new. And if it's true, it's what? Not new. And not old. I didn't say if it's true, it's old. <laughs> if it's true, it's not new. If it's new, it's not true. Now you guys don't forget, write that down. Don't forget that. That's important phraseology. Yes, sir. If it's true, it's not real. If it's true, it's not real. <laughs> no. I need to write that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. You ever have me write that? That means I already erased right. this and we're not done with this. Oh. 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 The only, only Christmas. What is it? I got it. Okay. Yeah. This is my personal, personal ink pen. If it's true, it's not new. If it's new, it's not true. If it's new, it's not true. If it's true, it's not new. Okay? If it's true, I mean, if it's new, it's not true. Yeah. And if it's true, you got two. Oh, good. This is bad. Oops. <laughs> Don't tell. I had a feeling this was going to happen with this little thing. I thought we were supposed to do something different with the uh, easel aspect. That's okay. Let me put it over here. If it is new, it's not, it's not true. Okay? If it is true, it's not new. Okay? This is my hot little phrase, and it should be a teacher. My sister has, I have a sister in Los Angeles, uh, we call her my hot. And she has the severe knack of coming up with the wittiest little little captures that I'm like, girl, that's a t-shirt, that's a t-shirt. Right on. Right on. Good page. Oh, so if you're going to take this and create a t-shirt on that, it needs to say my eye at the bottom. And with a name like that, that explains why it is what it is. Thank you, you guys. Because what is my eye? True. All right. Now, the next thing I want to go to, um, we were talking about uh, these other titles. Go to natives in the Black's Law Dictionary. Turn to natives. Because how many people say things like, well, we're the natives here, the Native Americans? I say that. And you're going to stop that today, too. Because I'm getting ready to show you that you're not native either. N-A-T-I-V-E. I hear my brother reading out there. Okay. So you may as well do it louder. A natural born subject or citizen. Stop. Right there. First problem is subject. Yep. See
One thing you're going to learn when you're looking up words, you need to sometimes define the words they use to define the words you're looking up. Right. A natural born subject. Now, if you want to turn the subject, you can turn the subject now, and, and we'll come back. But don't let me forget what we're coming back to. Or you can just let me read it, the definition of subject. Read on. Read on. All right. Subject. One that owes allegiance to a sovereign and is governed by his laws. One bound to obey the laws. This term is little used in countries enjoying a Republican form of government. Mm. Did that just go over your head? No. no. What is supposed to be, what is America supposed to be? Our, our Anki and ancestors, our ancestors set up a Republican form of government. The Europeans have converted it and diverted it into a democracy. If it is a Republican form of government, there is no need for a term like subject, which means there is no need for a term like native, because a native is a natural born subject, right? Now, it also goes on to say here, under subject, natives, which means, what do we say? Is na oh, I haven't shown you guys yet that natives mean slave servant. That's what I'm trying to show you right now. Hold on, let me see which, which order I should give this to you in. Hmm. Okay, let me go to subjects with an S. The same word as subject with an S behind it. Okay? Subject. Now listen carefully to this description because that's what a native is. Subjects that are servants and property of Rome and Britain who are there by lack, I mean, who, who are there by lack of knowledge and contracts cause them to be under subjection. Do you see subjects in the Black's Law Dictionary? This is in there someplace. Look at my book. Subjects. With an S. See, frequently you have to read, see, a lot of times when I, when I write my definitions, it's not always the first thing they start out with. Every now and then they'll have a page long of definitions and I go, oh, here's the meat right here and I pull that out. So, subjects that are servants and property of Roman Britain who are there by lack of knowledge and by contracts cause them to be under subjection. And this is the definition of the word subjection. I see too many people sitting in here without their books. How are you going to keep up with me if you don't have a book? Is there anybody that has a book that this sister can come and sit sit with you and look on with you? Or you want to come over there? There's a book there and there's a book there. The sister's over here. Because you guys, in order for you, you cannot take my word for anything, ever. You don't know me and you should not believe anything I say. It is imperative that you see this with your eyes so you get it. If you don't see it with your own eyes, it's not going to register the same as me just speaking it to you. It's going to go over your head and it's not going to etch into your mental. Once it's etched into your mental, then you guys have undergone the initiation that removes you from being in the class of fish. See, last night was initiation. That's why your heads were hurting when you left. <laughs> okay. Now, subjection is defined as obligated to act at the discretion or according to the will and judgment of others. Do you see that in subjection? Yes. Now, this is, now we're, what we're doing here is we're defining the word natives. Okay? Now, um, the word um, natives, if you really look at it, go to, um, turn back to native. I don't know if it's in it because I don't have my book. It makes it a little harder for me. I'm, I'm letting someone use my book. Oh, you know what? Actually, no it's not, no it's not, no it's not. Turn to villain, V-I-L-L-E-I-N. See, I have a way of finding the truth all over the place. Sometimes, V-I-L-L-E-I-N. A-I-N? E-I-N, villain, with an E. Remember, vowels are removable and interchangeable. There's really no difference between this one and the other. Villain is defined as a native voice. Is that what it says? 
Is that what it says? No. 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 What does it say in villain? A person attached to a man. Right. What? A person attached to a man. Okay. Turn back. Huh? That's all of it? No. Okay, what else is there? Because I don't have my book. That's it? No. That's is there more? V I L L E I N. In fruital law, a person attached to a manor who was substantially in the condition of a slave mm -hmm. who performed the base and servile work upon the manor for the Lord and was in most respects, a subject of property belonging to him. That's it? Good. Turn back to natives. Now, you should also find, I'm going to erase this new not true part and this villain part, because a villain, you're going to find that same definition of villain under natives. <laughs> but I'm going, to show, I'm going to have you look at natives two ways, N-I-T-I-V-E-S, and then go look at N-I, I mean, N-A, did I say N-I? I'm sorry, N-A-T-I-V-U-S. And then N-A-T-I-V-U-S. God, I have, I have to do a treatment so that my mouth says what my brain is thinking. Native voice. Do you see that? All English law, a native, specifically, one born into condition of servitude. A born serf or a human. So, a native voos is one born a slave or the progeny of a serf, a woman born a villain. That's what I should have in mind. But natives and nat native and native voos are the same word. So, if you are a native American, you are a villain, <laughs> subject, property, slave, servant. Do you understand? So, you're going to need to stop calling yourself a Native American. Native and Native Voose and Villain are really all one and the same definition. Do you get it? All right. Now, I want you to turn to First of all, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. <clears throat> I'm going to show you why these are, are, are colorful. Which one of these titles is, is correct? Of all the titles here that our people have been called, let me move this out of the way. Which one of these is accurate? The first one. The first one. Okay? You are a true blue, true indigo, which is a type of blue. American. I don't know who these other blue bloods are, but <laughs> um, Indian is okay. It, it's okay if you understand that an Indian, Indian is really the contraction for an indigo gin. Okay? But if you don't understand that, then you don't want to classify yourself that. If you understand it or comprehend it, fine. Natives, is that accurate? No. What's wrong with color? Colored, is that accurate? No. Negroes, which are no grows and no glows, and you're walking around here a superconductor that's all light in motion, which is pure light, is a Negro or a no glow correct? No. Or no. well, maybe it's cold red, <laughs> not cold left. Black. What is black? A uh, black. Wait, black is a color, and that is a problem. Black also means what again? Bleached up and pale. Bleached up and pale. Rudy. Are you black? No. no. <laughs> and you know why you're not black now? Yes. All right. So, are you a black American? No. Whatever that is. No. So that's a title. So these title problem, title problem, title problem, title problem. Afro American. What's that? No. First of all, Afro is a hairdo. Okay. And AF, turn in your regular dictionary to AFER. Remember, I told you vowels are removable and interchangeable. AFER should be in there. Now, how many people have heard anything about a Yakubian experiment? Yeah. Not nearly enough, so I can't even go there. 
See the seat? Okay, let me say this for the people that may or may not know about it. There are at least two different classifications of European. Okay? One classification of European, and please do not become insulted because our history is what it is. I keep saying to people that talk, let, let's say there is this God that they keep talking about, and we know what God is, so that's not, at least for this room, this group that was here yesterday, we know that doesn't apply, but let's use it because that's the general terminology. For individuals who believe or perceive that God is here and the devil is here, or Satan is here, if God created so-called Lucifer the devil, and he was his most appropriate angel until he tried to rebel and fail, if in fact the creator is the supreme and Lucifer is a created, at what point does Lucifer know anything or can do anything that the creator cannot do? <laughs> so if in fact Lucifer is supposed to be so-called evil, then where did he get it? Right. Right. Okay. So you don't know anything more than your creator knows, is that correct? correct. So right. Lucifer cannot possibly be more evil than the creator could ever be. Right. Now I'm saying that to say, <laughs> I'm saying that to say, Europeans were created by your ancient ancestors. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So all this stuff about, oh, they're this, they're that, they brought this, they brought that, they caused this, they caused we that. They couldn't have done anything or caused anything or created anything they didn't learn from our people. Right. Now, there are at least two types of Europeans that I'm aware of, and there's, there's discussion of a third type, and I'll mention it. One type were those that are the result of perpetual inbreeding. Because our ancestors, in some instances, were practicing entirely too much freaking incest yeah. to try to keep the bloodlines pure and the royal lines pure and all the other ridiculousness. So have you ever seen how Europeans want to do their experiments? And they use these things called white rats, oh, yeah. white rabbits, right. white monkeys. These little albino creatures are as close to them as they can get. Right. But if you do any, when you get an opportunity, do some research and try to determine how they come about finding these white critters. Because mama nature, mother nature, does not create right. these kind of creatures. Rats are brown, black, and gray right. in nature. Monkeys are brown, black, and gray. Uh, rabbits are brown, black, and gray. You don't go in nature in the woods and see white rats, white rat. You may now if Europeans let them out out there, mm -hmm. but that's not a normal entity. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So what they do in order to create these lab rats and lab rabbits and lab mice and make them albinos like they are is they inbreed them. They have the mother rat having sex with her daughter, a son rat, and you know the son rat having sex with the sister rat, and they keep spitting out these inbred rats until they get wider and wider, and they, these are what you call genetic <coughs> defect. And my people have come to believe that being lighter, brighter, and whiter is superior and is a genetic defect. There's something wrong with those kinds of genetics. There's something missing from that. So I'm saying that to say, one group of Europeans came about as genetic defective resulting from inbreeding. The other type of European came about from cloning and lab creation. And they were created with, you know, some different dirts, some different flowers, some different animals, including chimp. So when you get to the definition of A-F-E-R, did you get there? A-F-E-R? You need my regular dictionary? You guys have one? It's a regular dictionary, A-F-E-R. It should say something in there about a, 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 an ape. There's a regular dictionary, A-F-E-R. Should be there. No, regular, not blacks. Some dictionaries are going to have it, some are not. Let me see mine. Huh? Unless I'm spelling it wrong, and I don't think that I am. Let me stick these on so I can see what's going on here. 
A F. You found you found it? Is it A F E R or A F F R I? Which is it? They got an A F A F E R and an F A F A R. Which one you said? I said A F E R. What is yours saying? Mine in the brackets it has L period African close the brackets the Southwest wind. Oh God. I can't even find it in here. A F. Okay, turn to. Um, I'm still looking for this one about the chimp. A F R E E T. And I'm still looking for this one about the chimp because it's in here. I just got to figure. I got to remember what is how it's listed. Dang it! I have got to find that for you guys. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time looking for it, though. i got to find it, because AFR really means chimp. It means ape. And I'm saying that to say that you're not African unless you're part ape. Thanks to Charles Darwin, right? Huh? Thanks to Charles Darwin, right? Yeah, because i got to figure out where it was. And I don't know why I don't have a mark in here. You know what it was? It wasn't going to be a part of the lecture, but somehow I felt like I needed to mention it. A-F-R-E-E-T? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we got it. But I'm looking for something else. Africa. Oh, Africa. No, I see that. But I'm looking for A-F... I could have sworn it was A-F-E-R. Hold on. I'm only going to spend a couple of seconds more looking for it. If I don't find it, I'm going to have to move past it and leave you guys doing what you want to do in Africa. Because I like to give you the proof. And if I can't give you the proof, which I may not be able to find it at this point, then I have to leave you guys alone and you can keep saying you're African. Yeah, it says something about that. Dog ape or something like that, it says. But I have to find it. I do, and I don't know. I'll try to look for it when we take a break. So let's skip past this one because I don't have my evidence on these two. I'll tell you this much though. Now let's let's go here. Afro America, where is it on the map? Nowhere. Africa America, where is it on the map? Nowhere. So if it doesn't exist and you say you're African American, you're saying you what? Don't exist. Don't exist. So that's also meaning if you don't exist, then you're what? Not real. Right. So you get back into being colored. Right. Right? right? Assemblers that is not real. So you're going to have to make absolutely certain that the titles you apply to yourself are appropriate, which means the word appropriate, if you look it up, it means one's own. Okay? You don't want to say correct. You want to say appropriate. Because correct is what? Co what? Correct. Right. And rect is what? Right. And we need to try to get a little bit more aware. No. Okay. Gotcha. He's trying to find this in the book, sweeties, and once he does, he'll give it back. Now, back to what we were reading about um, native, was it a natural-born subject and something about a citizen, right? Mm -hmm. Is that what it said? A natural-born subject or citizen. <laughs> finish, finish say, are you on, are you on native? Yeah. Read that for me. A citizen by birth. One who owns his domicile or citizenship. That's native? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, keep going. The fact of his birth in the country referred to. The term may also include one born abroad. His parents were then citizens of the country, and not currently residing in foreign parts. U.S. versus Long Ken, That must be fourth edition. Read this one. What does it say in here under native? A natural born subject or citizen. Stop. A natural born subject or a citizen. Turn to citizen. Because it's a problem to say you're native. I, I think you probably have enough, but I need to cover the citizen aspect also because you're not citizens either. You're not citizens. Because I know a lot of these Moors tell you that, but they never tell you why. So you need to be clear on your concept and your precept so that you get it. Okay, at citizen it says here, one who under, which means now you got to look up under, the Constitution and laws of the United States 
or of a particular state is a member of the political community, owing allegiance and being entitled to the enjoyment of full civil rights. Now, citizens are members of a political community who have submitted themselves to the dominion. That's a problem, especially if you know what submitted means. Do you guys see that in your book? Yes. Let me say that again. Citizens are members of a political community who have submitted themselves to the dominion. That means you have made yourself a slave. Therefore, if you claim you're a citizen, then they, when you go in the court, you cannot argue about jurisdiction because they have what? And why do they have it? Because you said they have it. You said, you went in there and said, I'm a citizen, I have rights. And in a minute, you're going to not say you're a citizen and you're not going to say you have rights. <laughs> Citizens enjoy rights and franchises, both of which are a problem. One's citizenship confers the right to sue in federal court, not one's residence. For a citizen of the United States to become a citizen of the state, he must reside in it. Now turn to reside. There's a very massive problem with residing anywhere. You do not want to reside, and I'm going to tell you why. How many people here thought they had a residence in Chicago, Illinois, or wherever we are? OK. And when they talk to you, what do they say? OK, what's your address, and where's your residence? Reside. This is what it says. Actually, let me start. Yeah, let me give you reside. Reside means to adhere as a quality, to be vested, and that's a problem. The word vested is a problem. To be vested as a right. Now, vested is defined as this. To become a legal title to the present or future enforcement of a demand of another. Do you understand that, or do I need to say it again? Some of you, I, I see question marks going like this. I see puzzles. Say it again. Black's law, huh? Black's law. Y'all writing the regular dictionary? I'm in the fourth. Okay, my my book is a fifth. Fourth is better than nothing. But keep in mind, again, reside may say a whole lot more than that. But I found the meat and potatoes. I have a tendency to, I, I speed read. Somebody can give me a book, and I just flip through and go, OK, 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 OK. And I've read it. See, because what you have to understand, especially when you're melanated, people think they need to sit down and take two or three weeks to read a book. All you have to do is look at the pages and turn the pages. Everything your eyes hit is burned in your brain, permanently etched forever. And when you need it, it will recall, it will come up. And you'll be like, where'd I get that from? Where'd I get that from? You'd be amazed how much stuff you see every day that you, as a melanated person, don't realize you saw it. But if you looked and your eyes laid on it, you saw it. Remember, I am a clinical hypnotherapist. Anything that your eyes see, you can be taken to, into a hypnotic state, and it can be brought back detail for detail. So if your eyes saw it, your brain registered it, you read it. So you can sit there and just turn pages. And you've read it. OK? Now, I might have gone through reside and pulled out somewhere in the middle this little phrase I'm getting. So you guys might be starting at the top going, wait a minute, where is she reading from? So you may have to read, read faster to find where in your paragraph this, this statement is. So let me give it to you the way I have it in a lecture that I gave a group. I started at resident. Let's go to resident. We'll come back. Now, somebody tell me where we were before we got to the resident. No, we were in citizens. Thank you, citizens. We're in citizens. OK, we're going to go back to resident. Let me just write that down and keep a note so I'll, I'll get back to it. See, right now, what I'm doing is I'm telling you what a citizen is. 
Okay, because remember it said a citizen is one who resides, or something like that it said. Let me go back. Resides in the state is what it said, something to that effect. One who under the Constitution and laws of the United States or of a particular state is a member of the political community owing allegiance and being entitled to the enjoyment of full civil rights. Citizens are members of a political community who have submitted themselves to the dominion. Citizens enjoy rights and franchises. One's citizenship confers the right to sue in federal court not one's residence. That's when reside came up. And then it went further to say for a citizen of the United States to become the citizen of the state, he must reside in it. So we need to look up residence and reside to clarify what a citizen is because you don't want to be one, because you don't want to be a resident that resides. Because if you reside, then you abide. And I'm going to right. share that. So go. let's start at resident, R-E-S-I-D-E-N-T. Any and then I'm, gonna, then I'm gonna take you down, okay? Any person who occupies a dwelling within the state has a present intent to remain within the state for a period of time and manifest the genuineness of that intent by establishing an ongoing physical presence within the state together with indica, indica? That his presence within the state is something other than merely transitory in nation. Nature. Nature, pardon me. The word resident, when used as a noun, means a dweller, habitant, or occupant. One who resides or dwells in a place for a period of more or less duration. It signifies one having a residence, or one who resides or abides. Stop. Turn to abides. No. Yeah, turn to abides. A-B-I-D-E-S. Remember it said a resident is one who abides or resides. We're going to look up abide and we're going to look up reside. You do not want to reside or abide. Because remember reside meant to adhere as a quality or to be vested as a right. And vested meant to become a legal title to the abide. present or future enforcement of a demand of another. Abide, I don't know what all it says, but this is the meat and potatoes of abide. Means to accept the consequences of. To produce all the evidence intended to satisfy. So when you go to court and you say, well, where's your evidence? Prove that you have jurisdiction. If you're a resident with a residence, you reside and abide. Because you said, I'm a resident, so they say, okay, do you live in such and what's your address, and you give them one, you have already admitted all the evidence they need to state that you're a citizen that is a resident who resides, therefore you're required to abide. You understand? All right. Now, do I need to say abide one more time? You got it. Do I need to say reside one more time? You got it. Yes. Now keep in mind this. Residence is not the same as domicile. Mm -hmm. Only the only courts that I've seen lately that even when you have when you fill out a form, like if you go to um, um, back in the day in California, if you went to the United States uh, Bankruptcy Court, which is a federal court, they were the only courts that had a thing on there. You know, that had resident and domicile. You can fill out one or the other. People that are up on game go, okay, I have a domicile, and they go there. But when you're dealing with the states, which are colorable, and I have got to share that with you guys, and I guess I should do it since it came up. Mm -hmm. I guess I should do it since it came up. Yes. 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 We all agree. Yes. Yes. yes, okay, okay. The states, <laughs> look, as far as the federal government is concerned, and I'm going to show you in this dictionary where to, where to find it. As far as the federal government is concerned, any state action is a colorable action. And I'm going to show you guys in here where to see that. Do you have your book? It's in the back. I just, uh, he found it? Mark this if you uh, had a highlight. Why don't you just read it out for them so we don't have to back up? Okay, actually it was found, the AFFE was found under 
A. A. A P E. A Remember, P and F are the same letter. <laughs> They're kind of the same letter. And P, especially P H. A. 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 B. A tailless monkey or a monkey with a very short tail. Any monkey. C. Anthro anthropoid ape. An imitator. Mimic. Imitate. Mimic. Then it has M E O E A P A. And then in the brackets it says A F F O and A F F E. Ape like. <laughs> okay. So. A F E A F R, but you know A F F E A F F R. Somewhere I saw it where it was A F F R. You know, but I but but I don't remember where I saw it. But I'll take what you gave. But again, I, I gotta find the evidence to show you guys that A F R means ape. So if you're an African, a A F R A P F a P H R, that means you're an ape ican. So you got Puerto Ricans, Jamaicans. You know, you see Dominicans, mm -hmm. ape Ickens. Mm -hmm. You're not an ape. You're not African at all. Nope. You found it? Also, monkey and oh, monk I heard meant you say the same thing. Huh? The monkey and the monk meant the same but thing. But see, AF, remember, the vowels are room, removable and interchangeable. The A-F-E-R, if you drop the E out, it's A-F-R. Vowels can be changed. It can be A F E R, A F O R, A F I R. It's the same. Vowels can be removed entirely or replaced with other words. That's what they call a magical science known as gematria, notaricon, and um, uh, there's another name. There, there are a few different names for this particular word science that the Jews have mastered. And they can take words and contract them or expand them or make it look like a completely different word, but if it has the same numerical value, it's technically the same word because it has the same frequency result in the uh, cosmos. And that's what they do with English, which is an equivocal language that was made intentionally to mislead and conceive and deceive. You know, that's where the Kabbalah comes into play on so many things. You just take it for granted, again, with this bastardized language we call English. Yeah, it's English is that. invention. They continue to invent it every day. Now, I got to find this information on the state action for you. Turn in the dictionary Black's Law and see if there's something in there that says state action. It might say exactly that. But again, since I don't have my book in front of me because I'm letting people use it, it kind of slows me down just a little. Yes, um, Read to me, well, there's a, lot, there's a lot under state action. Let me come and look at your dictionary so I can get right to the point. Okay, in the, in the definition of state action, get down to the last one or two sentences. Read this last part that's underlined for me under state action. There is no practical distinction between what constitutes, quote, state action, close quote, for purposes of 14th Amendment and what is required to fulfill, quote, under color of state law, close quote, provision of Civil Rights Act of 1871. Okay, let me say that again. State action. Did you, you found it? You didn't find that phrase? It's in four. It's not, you sure it's not there at all or you just can't find it yet? State action. It says here, state action is no different than under color of state law. That's the claim under due process clause of Civil Rights Act where a private citizen is seeking damages or redress for, redress for improper governmental intrusion into their life. There is no difference between a state action and an act that occurs under color of state law. Now, what do you know about color? If it's under color of state law, then what is it? It's, 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 artif it's, not, it's fraudulent. It's, 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 uh, it's not real. The feds know that certain things are not real, but 
they cannot intercede and do anything about it for you. It's like you being a parent and you have a child that decides they want to get on drugs and follow some cult to Guyana. As a parent, you know that this person is doing something wrong and they need some assistance. But how much can you say to a child that usually doesn't want to hear what you have to say anyway and it's probably something you said that made them run off in the first place? So as a parent, what you can do for your child is if they call you from Guyana and say, look, mom, come get me. There are people out here trying to make me drink this Kool-Aid. <laughs> and that's only for you guys that are old enough to remember this story with the Jim Jones and Guyana. Some people here are too young as before your time. Uh, please come get me. They're out here. They're trying to make us drink this Kool-Aid. Uh, they said it's cyanide poisoning, and we have to practice so that if we all have to commit suicide. I, I don't want to go. I don't want to be here. I don't want to die. But I don't know how to get out of here. Now, when they reach out and touch you as a parent, what are you going to do? Everything in your power to get them out of there. But until they come to you and say, help me, there's little you can do other than sit back and go, my God, my child, my poor baby. Mm -hmm. So our ancestors set up the federal government in L. Eastmore, Washita, mm -hmm. which now has somehow become the District of Columbia and Washington. We set up, the, the federal government was originally our, our people. We set it up to secure any problems that occur between us and the Europeans, because they were foreigners. Anytime there was a grievance between us and them, we were supposed to handle it at the federal level. That's why when the back now, since George Bush and his family and all these people have taken over, I don't even know if you can go to these people for help anymore. But that's why when Martin Luther King was marching and they started trying to integrate schools and things like that, who did the Moors have to go to? The feds, who brought in national, national troops, or federal troops and National Guard, and said, move out of the way, these people are coming through. That's what the feds were for, to, to, to address any uh, uh, conflict that occurred between us and the foreigners on our land. Now, I don't know what they I don't know what's going on. You understand? So I'm saying that to say the federal government is fully aware that there's a lot of things going on out here that are fraudulent at the state level that are a problem. But there's nothing they can do about it until the Moors come and say, hey. And even then you have to come correct. You cannot come to the feds with some little grievance and use a bunch of state violations that, well, they broke the penal code, this and the penal code, that. They can't help you. You have to come with the federal codes that were broken because their jurisdiction is restricted to what people keep calling 10 Mile Square, and it's not 10 Mile Square. It's less than that because Maryland took some of the land back. Mm -hmm. So the federal government, Washington, the District of Columbia or whatever, is not 10 Mile Square. It's less than that. It's, it's less than 10 miles squares for D.C., plus the arsenals, the forts, and territories. But they have it so that they can reach the federal arm out to any individual organizations or entities that receive federal funding. Yes? May I ask a question along this line of reasoning? I ask all the Moors that I come in contact with about the Moors government that I understand was in place for can I finish it? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> they, go ahead. I asked them about this government that supposedly was in place from John, John Hanson forward and what the time frames were that they were supposedly dealing with. I never really get any kind of answer from any that I speak to in what? terms of chronology because they're telling me that these presidents were only presidents for two, three, and four month terms, and I just don't rationalize for me. It's not that hard to find out about you. Matter of fact, you can go to a law, uh, a law library, not a law library, a law bookstore. There's a little book, it's called the Constitution. There's a little Constitution book. It's about this big. And it has red and white stripes across it and some blue on it. And it's about the Constitution. In there, they have a whole blip on John Hanson. Mm -hmm. I don't have the, that one right there. Give me that. That's the one. Thank you. This is called the U.S. Constitution. This is a book they put out. I think I got a blue cover, but go ahead. No, this book don't have a no blue cover. Page 66, I think. 
Okay. Huh? Mm -hmm. Is it page 66? Yeah. See, now this is what I'm talking about. I get all kind of off tangent here. I'm going to forget where I was, what I was talking about. I'm glad somebody's paying attention. Yeah, you go get this book, and if you say you have it, there's a whole blip right there on John Hanson. But that ain't my point. But what's my your point? point? My point is, they won't Thank tell you. me about this government that was in place. <laughs> the government that, that was they in place. The United didn't. Confederate States of America before there was ever George Washington. And for two four-year terms, two-month terms, that couldn't be true. It would have to be in succession of four years like we know things to be. And that would take us back into a time frame of the Renaissance, into the 1600s. And all the more is that I know are just talking in the 1840s, basically. I'm not sure if I understand what your question is, but if you're asking me for a chronology, <coughs> I ain't the one. You need to talk to Brother... Omari for specifics. I'm the sister that can give you clarity so that you can see things. I help pierce the fog so you can see stuff for yourself. If you need specifics, that's somebody else. But I can tell you generally the concept is, if you want to know about the ancient Moors and what their chronology is, you can find information on John Hanson on the internet. I'm hoping you're on it. You can find information on the Continental Federal Republic. That's what you look up, the Continental Federal Republic. There's information out there about it. There was also a lot of what was going, you have to look also in some of the information on the Delawares. Some of the information is under um, um, uh, Arabic. What was it you were saying? Amari. Where's Amari? Anyway, you can find some of this information under Arabic history. You can find a lot of it under the Moorish history. The reason a lot of people can't find what some of the Moors are talking about is one, they're not very specific or clear on how they d deliver their information. But the information that they're talking about, frequently if you're looking for it under John Hanson, black president, you're not going to find it because he wasn't black. The word black back then meant what? White. Hell. So you're not going to find it. You have to know it's going to be either under... Um, American, or it might be under Indian, or it could be under Arabic, or it could be under Moore, could be under Washita, it could be under any number of things. Our history is not that easy to find, but it is there. I typed his name. Can you help this brother out? So, so, you know, with, with this kind, this question he's got. It's not that it's a bad question. Um, it's just that I can't help you with it at this point because I don't know how much time we have, but we're going to lose track of. I got a lot to go over. So, since you, can you, how, any of you, got, any, do any of you in here that come to this class have any information that can help this brother at all? Okay, there's some, the, turn around and look at these people back here that have the hands up. Hanson served two years. He also appointed uh, George Washington as the general of the army. Right. He also was the one that started off his Thanksgiving Day class. You know, just put his name, just type his name on the, you know, on the internet. That's what I did. John Hanson. I'm right on that. Are you on the internet? Do you use the internet? Okay. But you guys have some information that you can share with this brother, right? You see the brother in the back back there with the gray on? Get with that brother. He can give you some. Now, nobody's going to be able to give you all the information. But if you get a piece here and a piece here and a piece here, then you'll be able to see the big picture. Yes, sir? The recent update, I think it came in 92 or 93. Would you uh, say something about that? Recent update of what? And the papers that you have to fill out in order to be up to date. With the Washita? Yeah. The only information I can give you about the Washita is this. The Empress is not the Empress that we remember. She is currently in a nursing home in the Southern California area. I saw her probably about, when did we go? You didn't go with me, huh, baby? It was last year? I think it was last year, some, last summer. Last summer, it was last summer. They had a Washita convention last summer. Her son has taken over. No, What's I'm going on? Well, what is it that I'm, you're asking me? They filled out some new papers on me, and I'm asking you to do anything about it. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm answering and you, but I don't know what you're asking me. Her being absent. Do you know anything about that? Well, I was answering you, but you said you knew about it. Finish. The point is, you cut her off from answering. You cut off your own answer. 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, could you please follow your uh, Thank you. plan because it's... Um, yeah, that would be helpful. <laughs> not that the questions are not important, but they're not relevant to what we're doing today. Now, if you guys want to ask me stuff about this kind of stuff, call me at home, and what I don't have, I can try to find you, okay? I can try to find for So you two come and see me, and I give, get my phone numbers. If I can't do anything else for you and you, I may be able to direct you to someone else that can answer your questions for you, okay? As I'll tell you, like I said yeah. yesterday, what did I say yesterday? I don't know everything. I don't have all the answers. I give you what I got. It's not much, but the little bit I have, everybody should know this little bit. That's the best I can do. And when you get this, it'll help make you clear. But I don't have specifics, because I told you that yesterday. I don't have all the specifics. But I have the clarity. I can move the fog so you can see. And then when the specifics come, you go, oh, that's what I can do for you. But you weren't here yesterday, so you probably missed that part. Where were we? Where were we? State action. State action. And we were doing that because we were covering citizen. And what were we saying about citizen? Let's go back we to citizen. We got all the way down to something on L. E. Small when you were talking about that section now before I asked the question I asked. I forgot what I was saying about Ellie's. Why is it not his square miles less than that? Because right. um, yeah. Maryland right. took right. a portion of it back. Right. Okay, but all of that was just, you know, to deal with the state it. action to, for us to understand how the federal government actually works and how you can go into federal court if you got federal air. Thank you. Th now that's what I needed to hear. Right. Thank you. Right. When you are a true American, Al Moroccan, you can get redress in the federal court at the federal level because our ancestors set that up. Again, since George Bush and all his people took over, I don't know. They may have their little friends in place that act like they don't know what you're talking about anymore because they knew that was a way that we would go and circumvent and get around them. But you have to go in on the strength of your title based on nine-tenths possession of the law rule. Your title has to be strong. Your case has to be strong. Not fighting against their weaknesses. You come fighting from your strength. Okay? Now, let's get back to some more stuff that I wanted you guys to have. We went over that, subject, subjects. We went over state law, color of law. We went over... Ah. Do you guys know about consent? No. no. Turn to consent. Wait, wait, stop. Wait, stop. No, because... There was something that we were saying earlier under um, we were going through residents, citizens and residents. Abidings, ab 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 abides and residents. Right. But somebody said, did it say something about privileges and uh, immunities or something under there? How many times have you heard something about privileges and immunities? Because isn't that in the Constitution somewhere, 14th Amendment? Yeah. Okay, let's go to right. Because I remember I kept saying you guys don't want to have any rights. Right. Let me right. right. Let me show you about some rights. Laughs there. <laughs> Let me show you why you don't want rights. Turn to right in the Black's Law Dictionary, R I G H T. Right. And absolve me for allowing myself to be dragged off the tan off the square. Circle. Thank you. <laughs> for getting dragged off the three hundred and sixty degrees of completion. How's that? Okay. Okay, right. Right. Now, right says a whole lot of stuff. But I want you to find this part. I'm going to read to you the most important part of right. A right generally is the powers of free action in juristic content. I mean, excuse me. It's the powers of free action. That's generally. But I want you to find where it says in juristic content, because that means legally and in court. In juristic content, the word right is the capacity of one man to control the actions of others with the assistance and the assent of the state. Do you see that? You found it? Yeah. Do you understand how powerful that is? When you go into court saying, well, I have my rights, I have my rights, the state is where you're usually in a state court 90% of the time. You're in some county court that says it's the state court of some place or other. Or at least that's the way it is in California. I don't know about here. But when you go into the court 
You have the judge there, probably laughing and thinking, yeah, you have rights, and I am here to assist the Pope to in controlling you. Let me read it again, because it may not have added up. A right in juristic content is the, the capacity of one man to control the actions of others mm. with the assistance and the assent of the state. That means the state is going to help and do whatever they can to make sure somebody else can control you. Mm. That's what a right is. Is that in your book in the fourth? It's in the fourth? Is it in the fifth and in the sixth? Is, does everybody see it that has a law dictionary in front of them? You found it? Because you need to see that with your eyes. Yes. We have four, five, or six. Well, you can get a third one. Four and six are better. You're welcome. Okay. So how many of you want rights? How many of you want to go in the court arguing about the rights that you have? Okay. But see, these are things you need to see so that you know why. And it, otherwise, I'd just be talking and it, it'll just go over your head. Yes. And you're implying that that one man who has the capacity to control the other may be... We don't, I don't know who it is, but it's obviously it's not you. When you go in there, it's not you, is it? Is the state trying to help you control the actions of others? No. So the state is helping somebody, some one man somewhere, control your actions. Now that could be the Pope, it could be the President, it could be the Mayor, the Governor, I don't know who it is, but it's not you. And I'm saying that to say, when you go in there, you don't want to go in there babbling about, I have my rights. Because they'll go, yes you do. Okay? You don't even have a dictionary in front of you. You didn't need one? Oh, okay. All righty. Now, privileges and immunities are a problem. So I need you to under turn to um, privilege. Privilege. In the Blacks Law, right? In the Blacks Law. We're Blacks. Privilege. P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-E. -E. And I'm going to erase this in a minute. Matter of fact, let me do it now. A privilege? Well, I think the 14th Amendment is supposed to have given privileges and immunities, isn't it? Yeah. Why do I keep winding up over here with my ink pen? See, I haven't even gotten to the lecture part yet. We're still in study group. I got to give you guys a lecture. But we didn't get there yesterday. Okay. Privileges are private laws. Is that what you guys see? Huh? Then you gotta keep looking. Says they right power. Huh? Says they right power. That's all it says. Okay, well never mind. Let's get past what the fact that it says a lot. Let me just try to get you to the meat and the potato. A privilege is a private law. And there are two categories of privileges. One are those that are given by consent. Now this part is very important. This is a very profound piece of information. This is a category. This is category, okay? The other are those that are created by law that have nothing to do with consent. Okay? 
Consent comes in two types. Who knows? You know. You know all about law. What are the two types of consent? Voluntary and involuntary? Implied and express. OK? Express, con most of the time when you go to court, the problem that you have is a privilege problem. Because they, they perceive that you have privileges that they have, they exercise based on your consent. And usually it's based on your implied consent. Implied consent means people can assume something based on what you do or what you don't do, based on what you say or what you fail to say. So when you walk into court, for example, the fact that you showed up tells them they can assume that you did what? Appeared. And if you appeared, remember yesterday we determined that to appear means that you voluntarily agreed to submit yourself to their jurisdiction. So just the fact, not, now I'm not saying don't show up. Don't misconstrue what I'm saying. The fact that you showed up implies, what am I stepping on? That you appeared. If they call your name and you give them an address, then they say, okay, uh, Miss Jones, uh, can, you give, can you state your address for the record? And you say it's 123 Bell House Street. Now they can assume that you have a residence, which means they can assume that you abide and reside. And that's all the evidence they need based on an implication that you are in the jurisdiction. You understand? So, when you walk in there, they have things that they've created by law, and these privileges come in two types, the consent and those that are created by law. So most of the time when they're dealing with you, it's not on law, it's on what you express or what you imply. Because these are the two types of consent. Express consent means you specifically say, something or other. Well, I am here, I come to court as a special visit. I'm here visiting. You specifically said, I am visiting. Once you express that you're visiting, that takes away the implication of appearing. Because there's a difference between visiting a court and an appearance in court, <clears throat> OK? Now, when you get a chance, you should look those up. Because people are looking at me like, now what does that mean? So look up visit when you get a chance. Because otherwise, we'll be here all day going over this, and I'll never get to the lecture aspect. We're still doing study group stuff. Study group, I interact more with the group. Lecture, I just talk to you. Now, there are two types of privileges. Remember, first, there's two categories, consent and created by law, irrespective of, of consent. Now, there are two types. And this is where the problem is. They are favorable. I don't even how you spell favorable. Uh, I must be tired still. I think I'm on jet lag. And the other ones are odious. OK, turn to privileges or privilege. Oh, we already did that. Yes. Turn to, um, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me find it in my notes because it'll be faster because I don't have my book. Bear with me. Privileges and immunities. Now, the privileges and immunities clause, there are two places that it's mentioned in the Constitution. They are in Article 4, and they're in the 14th Amendment, Section 1. And you need to be clear on this because you don't want to start saying, well, I have privileges and immunities, and the Constitution guaranteed me those. You don't want those either. Privilege is an affirmative defense which must be pleaded by the defendant. And if you do not expressly plead your defense under privilege, then they're going to assume by implication that you only have odious ones. I say don't deal with them at all, but if you must deal with them, make sure you know the difference. 
Now, the two types are favorable and odious. Favorable privileges are ones that confer anomalous and irregular rights. Odious privileges are those that impose anomalous obligations or impose irregular punishments. I can tell that just went right past you guys. <laughs> let me let me see my book no. so I can tell them where to find it. One I just gotta let me find it in my book so I can tell you guys where to find it because you're saying in privilege it doesn't say anything, and I'm saying in privilege. Section privileges and immunity. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's check 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 there. Okay, under privilege it said. A particular and peculiar benefit, that's a problem. A benefit is to be not fit, that are beyond the common advantages of other citizens. I, this is what mine says. I don't know what you guys are saying. So somebody said, they read something to me and said that's all it said for privilege. Um, and it goes on to say that it is an extraordinary power or exemption. It is against or beyond the course of law. Now, most Europeans are exercising or being treated with favorable privileges. Most of our people are being treated with odious privileges. So, under you said privileges and immunities? Yeah, Was it? Yeah. It's there. It's there? Yeah. It's over on 13, 16. It's on the next page. It says, within the meaning of the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, such privileges are as are fundamental, which belong to the citizens of all free government, and which have at all times been enjoyed by citizens of the United States. Stop. Now, I see where it is. This, remember I told you guys, you got to look for all, when you're looking at up a word, look at all the words that relate even remotely to that word. Go further down the page to the word called privilegium. P-R-I, that's where it is. Privilegium, I'm going to write it right here. P-R-I-V-I-L-E-G-I-U-M. Somebody read that. Because the privilege, the word privilegium and the word privilege are one and the same word. Vows are removable and interchangeable. See, they know that when it comes to my people, we're only going to look where we need to look and we're through. We don't want to look anymore. So they'll hide it somewhere else. That's why I taught you yesterday how to go to brackets. So you can find it. Wherever they bury it, you can find it. Who's got a loud mouth that wants to read privilegium loud enough to be on this mic? Because too many people just didn't respond to that. In Roman law, <laughs> a special constitution by which the Roman emperor concurred on some single person, some monogamous or irregular right. The word anomalous means irregular, not usual, not normal, not customary. Keep, now, we don't want to see that's the problem. Anomalous rights. That's a problem. Or imposed upon some single person. Some monogamous or hereditary rights, obligations, or inflicted on some single person, some monogamous or irregular punishment. When such privilegium, is that privilegium? You can just say privilege. The word pri privilegium and privilege are the same. Conferred anomalous rights, they were styled favorable. And they imposed anomalous obligations or inflicted anomalous. Now, this is the thing with the word immunity. The word immunity is the same as privilege. So when they say, well, I'm immune, I have immunity. When you look up immunity, and you can turn there, I-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y. The word immunity means an exemption or a special privilege that inflicts a punishment or confers a reward. How many people ever thought that the word immunity had anything to do with punishment? How many people even knew that the word privilege had anything to do with punishment? Where it, yeah. Right. So when you walk in the court, they're usually imposing 
our odious privilege is on you based on your consent that is usually implied by your actions. Do you have your driver's license? Yes, I do. Here it is. Just possessing it implies a lot of things. And I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm not saying that. I'm saying know what you're doing. Know why you're doing it. Know what you have. Know why you have it. Well, I have it so I can get where I got to go and try to keep these people off my back. But when I get in trouble, I need to know what's going on. Whether I choose to argue the point or not is irrelevant. At least I know what's going on here. At some point, something's going to click in you and you'll be able to start defending yourself. But like I told a brother last night, by the time you get to the point that you're able to defend yourself, all of a sudden they won't even bother you anymore. <laughs> You'll be like, why don't they mess with me anymore? I'm ready for them now. <laughs> Seriously, because at that point, you will start evolving into your melanated power. What did I tell you yesterday about being melanated? What is melanin? Melanin is a superconductor. And melanin is what? Power. So do you have power? Yes. No. You do not have power. You are power. You are power. So as you go through, the, like yesterday, especially yesterday, as you went through your initiation process and got your little brain on lockdown, your melanin went click, click. And it's like, ah. Uh -huh. So you got initiated. So now you are already in the process of evolving beyond the level of a swimming fish whether you know it or not. And the fact that you're clicking along, your melanin is going to start clicking a little differently. And as a result, the melanocytes on your body, and you have millions and billions of them, every little spiral, every melanocyte, like your nappy hair, is a little spiral. And it's just spinning all this energy. So as it spins, your energy is going to start tightening up. And these people will not even start to step into your space as you look around. You'll be like, OK, they don't even, they don't even approach me no more. It's like, I'm ready to fight now, and I can't even get a, can't get no tankers. <laughs> so, all right. Now, there's something else that's very important, because yesterday I, we talked about the two governments. The government de facto, which is who? Them. And them came from where? Us. And from what, as far as we know, what country? Europe. Europe. Or what landmass, right, Europe. The government de jure is who? Us. And we have been what? We've been disconnected from our power base, from our government. We don't, we're the de jure government that does not operate properly because we've been disconnected by an infiltrating foreign de facto government and their foreign de facto courts. Right? right. Left. Yes. Left. Left. Right. <laughs> now, one of the things that you need to understand, and it doesn't matter if you do this or not, but you guys have got to get this part. When you walk into court, generally you walk in there upright, and you're standing on your square, or your 360 degrees. <laughs> you're standing on your 360 degrees. But at some point, things start to occur where you wind up laid out for everybody to just walk all over you. One of the things that occurs is, one, you have a public pretender that they call right a public on. defender yeah. yes. that pretends to defend yes. when they really work for the court. Right. The word lawyer, and when you look at a regular dictionary, you get in brackets, it'll say something about liar. Right. And it'll right. say, it'll let you know it's, it, it, they're there to lay you out. But you won't see that just reading the definition. You have to go to the square brackets like I taught you yesterday. That's the regular dictionary. Once they lay you out, you are no longer standing. Right. Then you have no standing because they have your standing. Right. But when they lose for you, they won't go to jail for you. No. Right. So the other thing that you have to understand is when you walk into the court, there are certain things that are done and said that cause and write these three things down. Can I erase this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This causes a couple of things to occur. And for those of you that were not here yesterday, it was my intent to have today a freestanding lecture that had nothing to do with yesterday, other than the fact that those that were here yesterday were going to be triggered up and ready for it. So those of you that are like trying to figure out what we're doing here, I, I absolve me for you not being able to uh, smoke along with us. Um, there's something called Confusio. 
joinders and mergers. When you walk into court, you are a living, sentient, breathing being standing on your 360 degree spinning spiral. However, at some point, something occurs, something is done or not done, said or not said, that implies something that makes you become joined and merged in confusio. Oh, there's one more word I need to add up here. With something called no, in something called novation, that makes you, the living entity, become one with the artificial corporate created straw person. Yes. Did you say uh, sentient? Yes. S-E-N-T-I-E-N-T. -E -E sentient. All right. I really need you guys to turn. Hold on. You're going to love this. At least I think you're going to love this. Let me just find this one for you. I gotta give it to you in the proper order. Here it is. Turn to joinder first. J O I N D E R. Because everybody's saying, okay, how is it that they make me be one with my straw person? Was well, excuse me. Let me re let me reword that. How is it that they make me one with their straw person? It's not your straw person. You have nothing right. to do with it. You didn't create it. You didn't make it. So don't, you have to not run around and say, yeah, my straw man. It's not yours. It's their straw man. And the word straw man, when you get a chance, if you look it up, it means a liar from the beginning. It's a liar. That's what a straw man is. A straw person is a liar. Back in the day, they were paid to lie. They would walk into court. They, what do you call um, 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 District attorneys or prosecutors would have a case going on that they'd be on the verge of losing. And what they would do is they had these guys that would walk around with straw hanging out of the back of their shoes. And a prosecutor would find somebody that had straw hanging out of the back of their shoes and you know, approach them with this whole, you know, um, I have a matter and uh, I know you saw such and such and such occur and so and so happened. And the guy with the straw would go, well, no, I, I don't know that I saw that. So the prosecutor might whip out $50 and go, well, did you see it now? Well, I'm not so sure. I don't think I saw that. You know, I can't say for sure that I can come into court and testify that I saw this person doing that. So they might whip out another 20 and, did you see it now? Well, you know, as a matter of fact, I do remember. <laughs> so they'll go into court and they will get on the stand and testify and say whatever the prosecutor wanted them to say for the right price. They were called straw persons. They're liars. That's what the straw entity has become. But joinders occur as this. This is a joinder. When you walk in, you're you. Your mom named you John Doe, capital J, lowercase o-h-n, capital D, lowercase o-e. But your checkbooks have all caps. Your bank statements have all caps. Your mortgage statements have all caps. Phone bill, light bill, gas bill, credit, everything has all caps. Has anybody noticed that? Now, I do have a comrade that works as a legal secretary, and she said they're beginning to do things in upper and lower, yeah. which is interesting because they are aware that people are figuring things out. But they probably perfected the game such that at this point it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. But what's going on here is they know that you're you, a living entity, and they know that this straw thing is something they created, which is a debtor. You guys, as melanated individuals that are the Real autochtons here are the creditors. But they have to do a, uh, what do you call, a sleight of hand so that you can trade places, so that you become the debtor and they become the creditor and they just go into your money and do what they want to do. So, joinder is this, joining or coupling together, uniting two or more constituents or elements in one. Uniting with another person in some legal step or proceeding, consent to a document or agreement by a party who has an interest in the subject matter of the document or agreement, but who is not an active party to the document or agreement. So you walk in there, you're really not an active party to it. But something occurs where they do a switch 
and you become involved. Now, the word interest is defined as right, claim, title, estate, or legal share in a thing. And it said here that one of the definitions of joinder is the consent to a document or agreement by a party who has an interest in the subject matter of the document or agreement, but who is not an active party to the document or agreement. You walk in there, you do have an interest. Somebody gave you something and said, show up and appear on this date. So you have an interest, but you're not yet an active party. At some point, they start the joinder process, and they merger you. Turn to merger. Because the word merger means confusio. What is confusio? What's confusio? What's missing here? What is this word? It's confusion. Period. Simple as that. Okay, here we go. Today we're moving a lot slower. Um, a merger is the fusion or absorption of one thing or right into another. Generally spoken of, a case where one of the subjects is of less dignity or importance than the other, and here the less important ceases to have an independent existence. So when you walk into court, which of the entities is of less importance, you or the straw person? The straw person. The straw person is the less significant entity. Okay? You're the living sentient being. Yeah, but they can only deal with the straw man. No, no, no. They can't get the straw man to do anything without attaching it to the living and sentient being that has the wealth. You have to attach it to the real to make it do anything. So the real is the most significant thing. Okay? So, let me say that one more again. A merger is the fusion or absorption of one thing or right into another. Generally spoken of a case where one of the subjects is of less dignity or importance than the other. And here, when the merger occurs, the less important ceases to have an independent existence. So now, the substance of the thing is merged into and becomes a part of a separate thing with a new third identity. So here you come in, the living being. They have this case, this paperwork that really can't go anywhere without you. That's why if you don't show up, they put warrants out because they can't move the paper until something living comes in, okay? Now they can create the warrant without the living, but they can't move the case without the living because you're the substance. So they take that which is substantial, unify it with that which is not, and create a third thing in Confugio. All right, they merge you together. It says further here that as applied to rights, the term is equivalent to confusio in the Roman law, where the qualities of debtor and creditor become united in the same individual. And there arises a confusion of rights, which is often called an extinguishment. See, a lot of people just think about that in terms of banking you know, and, 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 and bankruptcies and this and that, but it, it goes further than that because everything going on in the courts is about banking. That's why the judge sits on a bench. And the word bench, when you look it up, it means bank. They have to go after the real and pull funds and resources and raw material from that which is real and create this new thing because they have a fake thing here that's doing nothing, it's just sitting there, till you come along with the living breathing, they connect you, and now they have a third thing that can go into the funds and pull from the banking account, okay? Now, it goes into extinguishment, turn to extinguishment. And then we're gonna get out of this stuff and I'm gonna give you guys a lecture, because this is, yesterday we were try, I was trying to make sure that this had nothing to do. Extinguishment, E-X-T-I-N-G-U-I-S-H-M like money, E-N-T. Ready? Mm -hmm. 
extinguishment generally applied to rights and estates. Now that goes into what the Moors are talking about. The, the estate that the Moors have that they can't even get to. But other people can get to it by using you. Generally applied to rights and estates to destroy and cancel out rights and estates with debts and substitutes a new debtor. One party, the creditor, which was you, makes the other his executor, substitutes via novation a new creditor or debtor for another. Then it goes into see bankruptcy. And that goes all into the national debt. See, because when the Europeans got set up, the Moors helped set them up. And when I say the Moors, because you keep talking about the Moors or somebody else, what did we find out in the dictionary yesterday about Moors? Who are Moors? What did the dictionary say? Any what? Any what? Any dark-skinned person. Any dark-skinned person is what? A Moor. Okay. Now again, that may or may not be a good thing. Moor then could be the same as niggers now. I don't know. I wasn't there. But I'm telling you what, you know, they have on the record. So when they got set up, we set them up, we helped write the um, Articles of Confederation for them, and we helped finance and fund them. And they owed us. They never paid it back. To this day, they keep beating on us and still stealing. And somehow they wind up flipping the script, and we think we owe them everything. Well, I got to pay my car note, house note, and even though I'm not getting any rent for these tenants on my land, mm -hmm. whose land is this? Oh. And we get nothing from the people on the land except grief and aggravation. So, if we finance them, then who are we? Mm -hmm. The creditor. Okay? We finance them, we set them up, we were the creditors. Now, I don't know what's going on with the Federal Reserve System. I have no idea who they are. They may or may not work for us. I don't know. Yes? That, uh, that case you were talking about, the reference to the gold, that came up on the printing and offices, $25 million in gold. That's what, that's what was given to the United States by the Moors to set up their own uh, corporation. Given to them from whom? From, from the Moors in gold. That's, that's how they started the corporation. And that was brought up again with Clintons and all this. That's why they give you the assumption that they impeached them, but you can't impeach someone when the, when the government's in bankruptcy. True. That part's true. Well, there's some good information there. He, that brother seems like he knows a few little things about the Moors. No, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, let, do I need to say that one more again, or do you guys understand what happened here? Extinguishment generally applied to rights and estates to destroy and cancel out rights and estates. With debts, this substitutes a new debtor. One party, the creditor, makes the other his executor, substitutes via novation a new creditor or debtor for another. <clears throat> this is why we keep getting beat up, because they don't ever want to pay us. Right. <clears throat> At this point, when you start talking about interest, I don't think they could pay us. They can't. They can never pay us. And at this point, I'd be, be happy to say, okay, we'll do this bankruptcy. What do they do? do bankruptcy and close out. You just shut out the debts go home. How many payments did they make to the empress? Don't. On her $86 no, nothing, million nothing, 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 as far as I'm knowing. You need right. to get her book. Right. But turn to novation now, and then we're going to start getting up out of this. The last thing I'm going to cover in this legality, because all we were doing was teaching you guys uh, how, to, how to research. We started out with how to look up the words in a regular dictionary. And then we went into how to decode things in the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. And from there we went into Black's Law and somehow we're still stuck on Black's Law. Which we should have been done with all this yesterday and today should have been just a lecture. Are you guys at Novation? Yes. Yeah. Novation is the substitution of one debtor, contract, or creditor for another that extinguishes the old and validates the new. That's what's happening. That's what it's about. 
That's all it's about. Every time we walk in the courts, that's what it's about. They make it, they come at you like oh, jaywalking and uh, speeding and failure to stop, but it's really about accessing the funds. Yeah, I see that. That's it. Because you guys are the creditors. They know you don't know, because they know you don't know equivocal language known as English. Now, that was before yesterday. Those of you that were here yesterday, I think you know it now. Is that accurate? Yes, ma'am. All right. So, we went over um, the power of melanin. Now that you guys have a little bit of clarity on that, I'm going to... Yes? It leads to your other word uh, that you stated, uh, sentient. It's one that has uh, the power of feeling. It leads to sense to know who's watching over the sentient. You go ahead on my brother. I'm scared of him. <laughs> and you know, they as sentinels can watch, but they're not sentient enough enough to feel, or sentient enough to feel. What do they need in order to feel more? Melanin. 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 Every time what, honey? Every time a person of color dies. Yes. That's the first thing they take. That's where all the melatonin, where do you guys think they're getting melatonin tablets and human growth hormone? Where do you think the stuff is coming from? Yes. They are not done trying to kill off more Moors. Right. <laughs> don't ever forget it. They need you. You don't need them, but they have you thinking that you need them. We were doing very well without them. Now, that other third type that I forgot to mention, I told you about the two types that I remembered, right? Inbred ones, genetically manufactured clone ones that were made here on the American shores, not in Europe. And the other ones I hear about but cannot prove or validate are the reptilian hybrid ones. I don't know much about that. I, I'm sure I know reptilians if they're out there, but none have shifted before me yet, and if, until they do, it's just hearsay. Hmm? Oh, you know one? You saw one? Oh, a lot of people know about it, but have you seen one? If you haven't seen one, it sounds good. I was in a peyote ceremony, they were playing a game, a uh, real tough game. So I did some funky shit to kind of they funky shit. And then they all started rearing up in their snake bodies. And I just stayed on my square. I'm like, y'all, they scared me, so you can get back in the body. So you okay. actually saw them shift before your eyes? But I'm used to being out of body, so that's not a new experience for me. Oh, you were in a natural projection mode? When you do ceremony, you're going to automatically be just being in the vortex. It's going to take you there. As well. well, see, now this is different because when you get into a natural projection mode, and, and sorry if we're going a little over some people's heads, we are the most powerful serpent with our two Kundalini, one Kundalini that appears to be two. No, I'm going to go somewhere with that because when they speak of the, uh, the serpent, I mean, it's really you. It, yes. So, so what, what they're trying to do is they're trying to bring it back to you so you can master them because otherwise you won't get it. So they go, they take it back to a language and they give you the G, but it's really a Y, as in yo. And, and this is what um, the Bush family studies because Bush is the German translation from the Moorish translation, which is Cree for cat. And it's cat and Cree, the last name Bush. And so uh, you have this, this other movie that's out right now. It's called. Um, no, no, no. It just came out for the weekend. The, uh, the, uh, it just came out with, within the last week. But anyway, you know, anyway, you know, it's Bar Barbara Bush is it. Barbara Bush is it. And so at the end of the movie, if they focus in back on onto the bush, she's Alistair Crowley's daughter. Oh. They, they're, they're, they're trying to give it to you, but you're so closed-minded that you don't see it. I don't think that's going to be the case for this group that was here yesterday anymore. I think now that things are going to start registering better. Not that I did a lot, because I personally, you already knew everything that I'm telling you. Everything I told you yesterday, you already knew it. What you needed was somebody to activate or move the fog so that you could see. When you're driving along in your car, and you, I don't know if you've ever been to a certain place in California, sometimes you get a very heavy pocket of fog, and you can't even, it's so heavy you can't see the hood of your car. Does that mean your eyes don't work? No. Your eyes work fine. Everything about you as a melanated person works fine. People need to move the fog so you can see. And that's all that we did yesterday. We cleared some of the fog. Now, what I want to get into,
today, which is a t completely different topic than yesterday. Does anybody have any, you know, we're going to break. Does anybody have any questions about these words? Because today is not as deep as yesterday. But that's okay. I had to shock you into wanting to listen. The title and your use of style, I didn't quite get first. The title and the use of style, first of, and I've erased it. I knew I was going to make it at some point. All these titles were wrong. One of the things you're going to do is figure out which of the titles is most appropriate for you. I would say, and don't use them if you don't get it. Personally, this is my title. Yes. That's my title. Or, on occasion, and I'm getting ready to start making my own IDs, and they're going to say this. No, they're going to say this. Oops, forgot the other H. Oops, I forgot the other H here, too. <laughs> my bad. I like consistency. Huh? I like the Yeah, but you know, a talk time is a tricky word. A tricky word. Did you guys look it up? Or you just listen to me? Turn to it. Turn to a regular dictionary. Turn to it in the regular dictionary. What I want to give you next is some, since we activated some power yesterday, now I'm going to give you some insights into how it was taken. Because a lot of people keep asking things like, so how did they get into power? How is it possible? Yes. Thank you for giving me that. I will go over that as soon as we finish our talk time, before we take the break. And we're going to take a break and we're going to come back on a completely different page. The study group is over. Okay, workshop. Whatever you guys want to call it, it's over. We're done with that. So you say go to the dictionary of it. On, on the word autochton, A-U-T-O-C-H-T-H-O-N. That's what you are. The Europeans are heterotoctons. So who has who has it in their dictionary? Oh, the dictionary is up here. One sprung from the land. He inhibited an aboriginal inhibitance. One of the primitive animals or plants of a region. Now remember, primitive, don't get twisted on the word primitive. The word primitive means prime, means first, means most, most, most I don't like best, but I'm going to say best, because best means beast. Woo! Hmm. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Who can I, I mean, absolve me. What can I say, because I'm not sorry. But, uh, <laughs> you know, this language is really a mess. That's bad. <laughs> and actually, telecommunication is definitely something that we must work on. But we do it all the time. We just need to become more actively aware of it. A top ton, an aboriginal, basically the same thing she said, but what I wanted you guys to do was get into the brackets. When you start looking up words, the first place you go is brackets. Go into the readings later. Brackets first. Then the paragraph, in that order. Is that A U or A B? That's A U T O C H T H O N. And our people are autochthonous. It says Greek. Autochton is of the land itself. It's the word auto plus the word katan, which means the earth. The land, the ground. Now, where is everybody stuck right now? Admiralty Maritime. Right. A talk to us, pertaining to a talk times, Aboriginal, Indigenous, opposed to heterotoctonous, native to a, now we don't like this word native, but you know, native to a place or thing. Okay? Also, a talk to no, Autochtonic, autochtonism, autochtony, autochtonously. You guys are the autochtons here. Don't worry so much about it being Greek. The original Greeks were us. 
the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh the the first everything was us. Yes, sir. Which goes right back to what they're trying to give you is to tell you to study the Kabbalah, which which gives you all the foundation of the physical realm. That's the Kabbalah that shows you what. Y'all need to get this brother to do a lecture. This brother knows some stuff. Seriously. They don't want you people in the room. They better send across country. What do you say? <laughs> you the people in the room, they rather stand the across country. I still didn't catch it. <laughs> he's saying instead of using the resources they have here, they rather send across the country too. Oh, he's talking about as far as y'all sending for me. Exactly. I'm sorry. Not necessarily. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's true. I'm not sorry, but absolve me for creating a problem for anybody. Okay. Take a five. Oh, blessed. Yes. Let me give you guys bless real quick. He's like, let's get our five. We can already take a ten. Take the ten. Come back at 430. We'll do bless when we come back, and then I'm going to give you all the lecture. <laughs> okay, we'll yeah. give you blessed and then we'll do the lecture. Turn in your regular dictionary to the word blessed. Blessed. Like bless you. Have a blessed day. Blessed. B L E S S. Now I I wasn't gonna give it to you, but I was told you know you really need to share the word blessed with them. Yeah, because you hear it all the time. How you doing, Spin? You ready? <laughs> oh, my bad. Hey, I got the regular dictionary. All right, it's in the regular dictionary. The word bless means to consecrate. Now, that's the word we're going to look up in a hot minute. But see, in the brackets, it's from Middle English, bless in. From Old English, bletsion. Bledsion. To consecrate originally means with blood. It does mean to bleed a thing. And my people are blessing one another all day long, and my brothers are bleeding to death in the streets. Because we, what did I say? When you have melanin, what are you doing to reality? Projecting. You're creating it and destroying it. Melanated, Europeans create nothing except the images. They program them into your mental computer and you, as the melanated superconductor, transmute and transmogrify their images and their program, their planned goals, and you make them reality. You have the power to create reality, and you have the power to destroy reality. And if enough of you get in a room or get together and do it, and there's plenty here, the reality starts to change. And the reality in Chicago has started changing all already because so many of you have started to change okay and it's a very minor change it, with melanin it don't take much now let me just go further down into the into the definition first thing I want to get to is where it says to condemn or curse bless. you see that in bless now are we back? Now when you talking about cursing, damned, and, and condemning, we're back into Jesus, Jehovah, and uh, I forgot what else. Zeus, Zeus and Zeus, and the devil. And who is who does more blessing than anybody you know? What people do the most blessing? But no, no, no. Which Christians are the re which Christians have the power? The melanated Christians, bless, 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 bless. It's like, get away from me with that. And you can't even get, right, you call some people, the recording is telling you about have a blessed day or something. You cannot, they don't understand the power of words the way you understand the power of words, especially when they utter forth from a melanated frequency. You understand? <coughs> Cover in. Turn to consecrate. Because remember, the first thing it said under bless was to consecrate. Isn't that the first thing it said? For those of you that have a dictionary and have it out. A lot of times you must look up the word that they use to define the word. Because sometimes you will not find it where you're looking, but you will find it 
when you looked where they've looked. Did any of you that purchased materials yesterday get an opportunity to look at or listen to anything that I get, that you got on me yesterday? Yeah. What did you watch? Did that help? Did you? Is this your woman? Oh, okay. I was gonna say, did she watch it with you? Because it should have made a big difference. Um, what did you get? Did that help? Did you learn anything there? Yes, it was quite all. Did your woman watch that with you? Yes, she did. She thought it was awful, too. Okay, you good. You, you, do it. And she put me in my place. <laughs> so only two people have had a chance to look at their stuff. Which one was that? What did you have? So everybody had a chance to look at how to empower men. And what did you think? Did it help? Did, did your woman watch it with you? No, no. Okay, now this ain't helping. It's, it's not helping. The, the woman must watch it. With, it's good for you too, but it will help her understand you better. Okay, but it'll help you fight with her better. Now do you know why you had so many problems with some of these arguments that you've had with them? Did you see? Did you see yourself in that lecture? Yes. Did you? Okay. Yes. What's the title of that? Yes. No, it's moving energy to empower men. I did it especially for my brothers. Did I say T? You know, I got to do a treatment for making my mind and my mouth work together. Okay, are we in consecrate? All right, consecrate. <laughs> What's that, baby? Fill it out today. Oh, uh, uh, the sister said, for those of you that picked up this order form yesterday, if you wanted anything, you need to fill it out today because I'm going to take the stuff with me and ship everything back when I get back to Cali. If you don't do it today, you know. And what was the name of that text they wanted? And I'm not dealing with it. So That was moving energy to empower men. It's not on there. It's on there. Let me see. What is the wrong one? Energy to it's the last one right there. It's a one disc CD. It's a ten dollar one disc CD. Oh, one disc DVD. My bad. Is this the amount? Not. No. Yep. Yeah, it's ten dollars. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, thank you. I, you know, I keep getting kind of off, off uh, my my uh, center here. Consecrate. All right. Here we go. Consecrate. To the brackets, consecratus, con plus soccer, sacred, holy, and I don't know if you guys know it, but I don't remember where I found it. I did some research, and I, I found out the word holy, the definition of it is anything sanctioned by the Pope. That's what the word means. Say that again. The word holy is defined as anything sanctioned by the Pope. Now, consecrate, to make or declare sacred, but the most important thing is the second part where it says, dedicate to the service of the de deity. Who sees that? You see that in the regular dictionary? Yeah. To dedicate to the service of the deity. You see it? Mm. Yeah. Turn to deity. You remember, you got to define the words that they use to define the word. Now, this is where you're going to get real clear on this blessed term, because you're going to see this for yourself. Bless means to consecrate, and to consecrate means to dedicate to the service of the day any. <laughs> Deity. Deity or dead? Deity. D I T Y. Oh, D I T Y. D E I. D E I T Y. Yes, sir. Oh. How, how, how many of you are there? Go to the brackets. Do you see where it says deuce? D-E-U-S. So when someone says bless you, they're consecrating you, which means dedicating you to the service of the deity, deuce. Who did we find out yesterday deuce is? The devil. So when people tell you bless you, what are they doing? Like it said in the first place, cursing and damning you. They're condemning you. Now you you can't you can't correct 
you know, everybody used to just say, like, okay, thank you, and fix it in your own head. Go, okay, clean that, purify, correct. Purify that, purify that. That's what you think to yourself. Mm. If it's people close to you that you know, you can tell them, please don't say that to me. I, don't pray for me, don't bless me. <laughs> you don't want anybody praying for you because you don't know who they're praying to. Okay? They don't know either. All right, they don't know either. Take a break. <laughs> We've moved beyond the study group and giving you guys clarity. At this point, because you have a clearer perspective on concepts, you should be able to move much easier forward with Brother Omari and his lectures. Because now when he or whoever comes to say certain things, now you have a better comprehension and grounding on why these things are or are not so. Okay? But we're going to get beyond that, and we're going to get a little bit more into that, which is kind of, sort of, spiritual. But, um, what was I, who, I was supposed to go over some word for somebody when we started. What was it? Uh, more, more, more. Okay, somebody asked me why I don't use Moorish? Moorish? As opposed to Al Morrigan? First of all, you know, don't, don't misunderstand. <laughs> I'm not a title tripper. I don't care about titles. I'm just Sister Yapa. That works for me. But I was granted a charter to head up Morris Science Temple, and I am a Grand Sheikis of a Morris Science Temple that I have since shut down called Temple Number Zero. But my experience, and I hope I don't disrespect any of the individuals that are here that are still actively involved with Moorish groups, the Morris Science Temples are off the hook. <laughs> I mean, you know, there's yeah, too much testosterone know. going on, there's too much wrong, and I, everybody's out here doing a lot of things wrong in the names of Moors and Moorish Americans, and Man. I just, I have to be kind of a, away from it at this point. So my thing, I'm with Dr. Hannibal. We need to get beyond Moorish, because that's all tainted and damaged now, Thank and you, find man. something that's not damaged now. Thank you. Now, I don't think that we're, evolved enough to go back to the phraseology Lemurian because we're still at a relatively low frequency and not remotely high enough to classify ourselves as Lemurians anymore. So all I can get with is Almorican. You know, uh, if you take American, remember I said vowels are movable and interchangeable. Right. Right. AL means from or down from or comes from mm -hmm. in addition to other things. But um, an Ican you have Jamaicans and uh, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans. You have a bunch of Ickens. Mm -hmm. huh. So I am a, a more Ickin, okay? An okay. Elmore Ickin, which is really an American. You can either okay. say American, Elmore Ickin, but I want to get away from what the Europeans put because that gets too much into mercenaries here, which is a whole other, another definition. Mm. But the word Morocco, and I did not bring... Um, the dictionary um, it's an Oxford remember I told you guys the Oxfords are like some of the best things out there but they're very expensive is there anybody here that has an Oxford on them I got half of them not on me though okay the word Morocco in the Oxford it's called an Oxford etymological dictionary the word Morocco comes from the Arabic word. I'm going to erase this at the. Well, let me, can I erase more ish? Yeah. Yes. First, get a regular dictionary out and turn to ish. I S H. Oh, okay, so we don't need to look it up. It's something like, or kind of like. You either more or you're not more. You're either more or less. So are you more or less? Girl can be boy ish. Something like a more. So if you're more ish, you're something like a more. If a more is any dark skinned person, I ain't something like a more. I am one. So I'm not more ish. I'm not buying it. You're not going to sell that on me. You're not going to push that down my throat. I'm not. I know too much about words to fall for that. Okay? But the word Morocco comes from the Arabic word, and if you know any Arabs, ask them. Um. I think it's Maghrib. El Aqsa. Am 
Maghrib al Aqsa. That's Morocco. And in Arabic, this, this phrase means the far or extreme west. So if Morocco means the far or extreme west, <coughs> according to the Europeans and their maps, right. America is where? West. West. The furthest extreme west. Right. So if this is the furthest extreme west, this is where? Morocco. 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 I don't know what's going on on the western shores of Africa. That's a colony of Morocco. This is the empire of Morocco. According to their maps, you're as far west as you can get. So if you tell somebody, I am more from Morocco, and they tell you, OK, we'll deport you back, no, you won't. You better go get your dictionary. <laughs> the word Morocco means Maghrib al-Aqsa, or Akusa. Who had a song out back in the day? Mama Ku, cool, Mama Sa, Mama Akusa. Or well, whatever it was, I think they had it. I think they kind of knew what was up. But Morocco is the far west. And we're the people that were found here when the Europeans came to the far west. So I am Al from Morocco. El Morocco or El Morocco. But uh, the individual people from Jamaica are not. Jamaica, they're Jamaican. The Puerto Ricans from Puerto Rico are not Puerto Rico, they're Puerto Ricans. So I'm not Morocco, I'm Morican. That's, me, that's my logic. But you don't have to use that. That's just me. Does that answer your question? OK. Anybody else have any other questions before we proceed with the lecture? And at this point, if you guys can hold your questions and just take notes. Yes, sir. Just one thing. Oh, you know, I definitely want to hear from you because you're on point. In, in the Arabic language, uh, El Madrid, it means the Far East, not the Far West. The map's upside down. Now, I believe that. So, so when, since the map's upside down, and they get, and they say, you said Morocco, you think it's over there, but this is the Far East. The map's upside down. So this is Morocco. In 1800, they changed all the names, but Mario said about all that. Anyway, <laughs> this is the Far East. This is. OK. Well, there you go. So that's something I didn't know. I can't speak to that. Again, I don't know everything. Well, with 360 degrees, it depends on your perspective, where you start, your starting point is. This is true, too. What is east or west. This is true, too. So those eastern travelers, yeah. you guys that are, the, all you eastern travelers, Mason's eastern stars, when you're moving to the east, you're moving to your future. The east means the future. So anyway, back to the lecture at hand. If we're done with all of that and everybody's clear. We're going to discuss chakras at this point. Because I told you guys, I told the sister I was going to try to take 24 lectures and put them into two days. <laughs> chakras is a word that means wheels. Chakras are transformers in the form of subtle plasma. And the word plasma means a highly ionized gas containing an approximately equal number of positive ions and electrons. Um, the, uh, uh, chakras are transformers in the form of subtle, subtle plasma fields <laughs> vibrating at specific frequencies. Does there, did I go over anybody's head? Does everybody know what a chakra is? Everybody have a clue? Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Okay. I'm just giving you some more clarity on your understanding of chakras. We live in an ocean of energy, and the energy flows in and out of the body through these spiraling vortexes called chakras. But for melanated individuals, they also the energy also moves in and out of the spiraling vortexes called melanin. And energy moves in and out of the spiraling vortexes called your nappy roots. OK? Yes. Dr. Africa refers to these so-called chakras as melanin clusters. So to, so to try and keep us away from this melanin aspect of life, period. Because I believe the chakras come from the uh, Indian Kutch civilization, or what you now have over there in India. So uh, he referred to the uh, chakras as melanin clusters, not, you know, the name melanin clusters, rather than the chakras. 
Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Hopefully that was helpful. Okay. These spiraling vortexes convert impulses from one frequency to another. When the energy of one octave is open, then the other octaves open up through a resonating effect. So what we did yesterday is start opening some of your spirals and start resonating the way they're vibrating and the frequencies that you're moving at. And that's a very powerful thing for you as individuals. Now, we have hundreds of chakras, but most people focus on nine in particular. Um, and you guys know what those are, right? Okay. Is there anybody that doesn't? No. Okay. You got to know about it. Uh, okay. There are nine that people focus on most of the time. The first one, the base one, is the root or sex center. That's located in the vicinity of the groin. Then you start moving up, you get closer to the navel area, that's one that's the navel center. The solar plexus is right there. Now those two are kind of close, almost one behind the other. Um, then you move up into the spleen. There's another one in the heart center. You come up to the one in the throat center. The next one up is in the uh, third eye center. The next one up is in, is the fifth eye center. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. Okay. The second one is the, the, the last one is the crown center. Where is the See what I gave you guys at level three, I gave you two. Okay? Number one is the root center. Number two is the navel. Number three, I gave you two of them. I gave you the solar plexus and the spleen. Then at number uh, six, I gave you two of them. The third eye and the fifth eye. Third eye is here. The fifth eye is about here. Okay? It's about here. And a little more forward for you. All uh, right, a little more forward. There. Okay? All right. Obviously, I'm talking about some chakras that they ain't talking about. I must be on the wrong nine. Of these, there are four that people who want to work on their energy should focus most of their energy and attention on. These four are, one, the navel, two, the heart, three, the throat, and four, the head. Now, absolve me for feeling, I guess everybody's feeling like, how did we get here? Today was supposed to be nothing like the first half of the class. The navel center is the solar power of transformation. And it is said to be turned upward with approximately, well, they say 64 petals. The heart center is said to be turned down with eight petals. The throat center is said to be upward or turned upward with 16 petals. And when I say petals, they look like lotus flower petals. Oh, yeah. That's what the symbol itself represents. Okay, cool. We're we, we in business. Um, the heads, did I already do the throat center? No. no. Okay, right, 16. The head center is the lunar force of distillation, and it is said to be turned downward with 32 petals. That's why in ancient Kemet they would show the sisters and the, you know with, and, and all these uh, lotus flowers, huh? Uh, there are thirty-two petals. Okay. The head is the lunar force of distillation. Okay. People got it. Your head is, is the lunar. Down, getting lower down is just solar. Okay? What was the number for the throat or pedal? 16. Now, the reason I'm giving you guys this is because I gave you some information yesterday on melanin and the power of melanin and what you are as a superconductor of millions and millions or billions of mel spiraling melanocytes. And the darker you are, the more walking power you are. You are power and energy in motion. All right, now, 
A well-fortified aura, because this is what you're going to start working on, as you start clicking and, re and resonating, your aura is going to start to tighten up. And those brothers that saw that uh, DVD last night, those three of you, I already so you already have some, you've already been triggered a little bit more about the insight into the aura and how you don't want to be bleeding out too much. So now you have the tools to start not bleeding out as much as you may have been. Did any of that stuff make sense to y'all last night? Yeah. 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 Well, who said, oh, yeah, back there? Somebody back there saw it, too? You did? Oh, okay. Where were you when I was asking people to raise hands? All right. Yeah, this is very important for the brothers, because these are our warriors. A well-fortified aura, <laughs> unlike all the information on the words and everything, is your truest form and your most powerful form of self-defense. It is the aura that is the first thing that's going to keep a lot of nonsense up off of you. Right. From knucklehead youngsters to stupid ass cops and everything else. That's what you want to start working on first. But you had to get the clarity triggered yesterday to even get you here. Because some people would have been still stuck in the church if I'd have started talking about this. That's why I did what I did yesterday. You understand? All right. The aura has two main divisions. This is very important information. Two main divisions. Now, those of you that already know, I'm sorry if I'm about to bore you to tears. One is known as the psychic beta force. And the psychic beta force is the field of emanated total personality energy that is radiated by the astral body. Because you have more than one body. You have the physical body and you have other bodies. You have thought bodies ethereal bodies, astral bodies, psychic bodies, you have other bodies. Now, the, the psychic beta field has greater brilliance, brighter <coughs> colors, and a swifter variance to emotional and spiritual conditions. It changes faster than the other one. Okay? So if you start out real good, having a good day, and all of a sudden something goes wrong, that particular body will start changing colors faster than the other one. Now, the other one is the physical alpha field. That one's connected more to your physical body. And it is the field of electric energy that emanates from the physical body. Okay? Now, they tend to be almond or leaf-shaped. They're usually, can I erase this? They tend to be almond and or, of course, I'm not the best artist in town. I, you know, I really don't like to get up and start trying to draw things. Almond or leaf shaped. They tend to be wider coming from the area of the head and getting narrower as you get down to the area of the feet. Now, this thing has been called a few things. Some of the things that they call it, if you want to start researching it, are the aura. It's also been called a halo. It has been called a nimbus. Another word for it is glory. It's also called an egg. And it's been called also a mandorla. I personally just call it my cloak, but you call it what you like to call it. Now, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. The two bodies, the one for the, the physical body and the one for the psychic body, are tied to one another the same way your psyche and your body are connected. A powerful order aura is required to shield you from the three primary forces that are set in motion every day to attack you. Now I'm going to give you the three things that are attacking your butt every single day. You may or may not be aware that you're under perpetual attack, but you are under perpetual attack, day in and day out. 
The first form of attack are the unintentional ones that people do not mean to be attacking you. But nonetheless, you are being at, you are in battle. These come from your relatives, friends, neighbors, co-workers, and the occasional stranger you encounter. Like, for example, the ones that say, oh, have a blessed day when you get off the bus and you've been talking to them. <laughs> These individuals have, they lack knowledge, and because of their lack of knowledge, it allows their alarm and indignation about, for example, your lifestyle choices, like maybe you're wearing a turban and they have a problem with it, or you might be gay and they have a problem with it, or what, you know, whatever the situation, you got a white girl and they got a problem, whatever the deal is, somebody has some issue with you and your choices. And frequently, it might be something as minor as, what do you mean you're not coming to church today, sis? You going where? You see who? So who? You, you out for who? <laughs> Little things like that, believe it or not, are eating away at your energy field. They're chipping at your power. So these people, because they don't agree with your lifestyle choices or your belief systems or the activities that you're involved in, they generate considerable amounts of emotional opposition to you. And frequently, they think they're defending themselves against you and your new thing. So in order to defend themselves against whatever their disbelief is about you and your thing, they attack you. And they don't mean to, but it is still an attack nonetheless. And your very strong aura will protect you from that. And now you guys know that you have so much power, you can make it strong just because you think about it. Now, the other type are those that are deliberate and they are intentionally lost. It's the second type. These are the ones that are sent at you from soldiers, cops, guns, laws, specific words that police people deliberately say to you trying to hurt you. These are deliberate attacks on you. Diet, things that the system puts into food that they know you out not to eat. Like for example, you may not like pork, but they have it in the candy and you don't know it's there, and it's in the cheese and you don't know it's there, and it's in the ice cream and you don't know it's there, and it's in the bread and you don't know it's there. So that is deliberate. They are, um, for example, the toothpaste. How many people know that most of the toothpaste you buy in the store has rat killer and insect killer in the toothpaste? You knew that? Yeah. That's on purpose. Yes. See, so what they do is they attack from inside out. And frequently, gun, cops just coming up with their guns drawn is also an attack on you. And they're eating and chipping away at you. Um, the other ones are the psychic missiles that these people have hired, their little psychic workers to do damage to my people. They also have their advertisers with their subliminal garbage. The uh, suggestions, the business and government that's always advertising and doing all these things to undermine you and chip away at your finances or your thought processes. That's specifically deliberate and intended for you. They are trying to determine what they want you to be and determine what they think you should be, which is not yourself. The other one, or the third type, are the incidental ones. They're not necessarily deliberate, and they're not necessarily in intended, but they're incidental. These are things like earthquakes, electrical storms, certain colors, loud noises, like we're trying to do the lecture and they're over here shooting off whatever they're shooting off at this game. But whatever, that's an attack. It's an incidental one, but it's chipping away at your power. You know what I'm saying? So certain vibrations, sounds, noises, odors, colors, and other man-made energy sources that emit electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic frequencies, and electromagnetic pulses attack you. And these kinds of things will destroy your whole emotional level of, I don't like this word balance, but your emotional levelment and your mentality if you're not aware. So what we're doing is bringing you aware. Now being in at least a normal range of physical and psychic health, which most people are not, in at least a normal range of health, will give you the opportunity to fight off and fend against these kinds of things. 
Um, most of the problems that most people have are caused by built-in societal attitudes rather than personal matters or rather than any uh, deliberate research or any proof or evidence that anybody's found. Most things are belief systems. Let me see. Slight perceptions unnoticed by the conscious, like I was telling you, you see things and you think you didn't see it, but your mind did see it, but perceived by the unconscious might stimulate conscious words, acts, and deeds, or imaginings at some later date without themselves becoming conscious to you at a conscious level. Did anybody get that or did I just go over everybody's head? Did I go over anybody's head? Yeah. Okay, certain things can be done today that you don't catch consciously. And, like, let me, let me see if I can think of an example. Let's say you're watching a, 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 a movie, and there's some subliminal message in there that says, buy 7-Up. At this moment, you may not consciously see it. Your subconscious mind, unconscious mind, sees every freaking thing. Right. It comprehends every little thing. I don't care if it's a subliminal message. I don't care if it's written in a language you do, do not even understand. It could be in German or in Sanskrit or anything else that you think you don't comprehend. It could be in Chinese or Japanese caricatures. If your subconscious mind saw it, it registered everything about it, comprehended it entirely, read it and decoded it, and placed it in there. Now, at this moment, you may not go and get the 7-Up. It could be, you know, 30 minutes from now, an hour from now. Man, I'm thirsty. I need a 7-Up. Mm -hmm. So later, it will occur as an incidental happening that still may not come to your conscious mind that that's what it was. But it's still something that was put there that will cause an action from you at an unconscious level that's completely understood, but at the conscious level, you didn't catch it at all. Do you get it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, one of the things that you want to understand is that the psyche is able to produce conscious action from unconscious experience, including things that occur in dream state. Like, for example, there are people that have the capacity to astral project to others that are a little bit weaker in their spiritual power because they're stuck in religion, thinking it's spirituality and religion and spirituality are two totally different things. Religious people are not necessarily spiritual, and spiritual people are not necessarily religious. But certain things can occur um, at the unconscious level that will result in a conscious production. Um, let me try to think of something else. Oh, forget it. You guys know what I'm talking about. You've always been powerful with the power that's inside you because you are power. And when you're melanated, you are more power than others. The darker you are, the more power you are. The lighter you are, it doesn't mean you're not powerful. It means you're not as powerful as someone darker than you. Now, advertisers know this about you. They exploit this ability of your mind to unconsciously take something in and con unconsciously cause a conscious action whether you knew it or not. So they're always feeding you the, the messages and the programs that they want so that you can create the reality that we were talking about yesterday. What is wrong with the world? Whose fault is it? Why? Do you remember how you created it? Based on yesterday. The images they put in our mind. The images they project, they put in your mind. And you being a superconductor, you transmute it, you transmogrify it, you transform it, and you put it out and make it a real thing. You create the reality. They don't. All right. So they do this by using uh, uh, the advertisers in particular. They exploit your power. And a lot of these people that create movies exploit your power with these post-hypnotic suggestions. And like I said, I am a clinical hypnotherapist. They can put a suggestion out there today, and it may or may not manifest today, but at some point it will manifest, especially for those that are not in tune or that weak. 
And at a point, you will get where you will all you start to come to real like I do. I'm at a point where if I'm watching a movie or I see a commercial or anything, I always see the subliminal go by. I'm at a point where I can always see. I'm like, okay, that was a subliminal. I may not be able to identify what it was, but I know that it was one. Now, one of the things I don't like about DVD, and people keep saying, oh, you can do it with DVD, that you can do with videos, is you can take a video and you can find the subliminal and you can read it word for word. All you have to do is go back to where the point is that you saw the subliminal flash or whatever on a videotape and hit play. And as it's playing, you hit pause, 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 pause. And it'll slow frame through and show you the entire subliminal. And you'll be like, dang. But when you do it on DVD, and people keep saying, I have not been able to catch it on DVD. The, the, the way it frames through it doesn't frame right on a DVD. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You're not, so I know you've done it. Well, I don't know what kind of signal it is, but um, you need to be cognizant of the fact that there are people that are playing on your melanin all day, every day. The energy transformers or chakras spiral and move your energy. Your melanocytes spiral and move your energy. This movement or vibrating frequency radiates primarily upward and outward. That's why it's bigger at the top than at the bottom. Okay? Now, I want to get beyond that. I only wanted to add that because, again, that was something that you need to know. But there's something more important that I want to go over. And I call it sexuality, sexuality and singami. Excuse me. The reason I want to give you this prior to our departure today, there's a lot more on um, chakras and stuff, but uh, what time are we supposed to stop? Yes. S-Y-N-G-A-M-Y. S Y N like Nevada, G like George, A, M like money, Y. Now let me start saying this, and I know some brothers are going to get disoriented. <laughs> we got a whole hour and a half? I thought this thing went from 2 to 6. 2 to 7 to 30. <laughs> two to seven thirty, two to six. Y'all need to let me know so I know just what to give and what to hold back on. Two to eight forty-five. It was two to six thirty, but if you want to go to seven, that's fine because we started thirty minutes late. Yeah, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven thirty. Yeah, seven thirty. 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 We want it all. Because she has jet, she has jet, she's tired. She has jet, she's tired. I mean, I'm tired and I have jet lag, but I can still keep going. Okay, well, we got that much time. I'm going to give y'all another tip. I'm going to finish. I'm going to give you a couple more tidbits on the chakras and then move into the sexuality and sing out. I guess people are like, man, forget the chakras. Go to the sexuality. But, uh, <laughs> however, the, um, I don't know if I told you, but it, it, I don't think I did. Your chakras, the, which are transformers, as well as your melanocytes are multi-dimensional. Did I mention that? No. They're multi-dimensional and can go through quantum dimension, uh, dimensions. The movement can be amplified by your own intellect, your physical movement, your breathing, certain sounds that you cause, and ugeration. I call it ugeration. Other people call it conjugation. Some people call it sexuality. I don't like the word sexuality because it's too much like uh, sexuality. And this word means to cut and sever. You guys do know that, right? Yeah. OK. So I, I prefer this word. That is an extremely 
powerful word to call the thing that you guys keep calling sexuality or sex. I call it ugurating or ugration. Now you can amplify these spiraling transformers with your intellect, certain sounds, certain colors, breathing, physical movement, and ugration. And believe me when I tell you, when you're doing ugration, you can get <laughs> sounds, <laughs> movement, and breathing all knocked out in one trip. And, uh, uh, as a matter of fact, did I say sounds? Yes. Okay, okay. Bell ringing yeah. the Yeah. <clears throat> now, the motions are movements or movements of the mental, aerial, or ugaring energy are interdependent. They're all interconnected. If any one of the three, and did you guys catch the three or do I need to give them to you again? All right. These three things are the, uh, the physical, I mean, excuse me, excuse me, uh, 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 the mental, the mental, that which is, flo the air, the aerial, which is floating around in the energy around you, then the breathing, and your sexuality are interconnected. So the mind, the breath, or air, and your sexuality are interconnected. If any one of these three is impeded in any way, it impedes the other two. Most people, the first place you're impeded is in your breathing. Most of the people that look like me because they're under perpetual attack and continual stress, they don't even breathe deeply. Are there any martial artists in here? Do you know what I'm talking about when I say most of our people don't breathe? Right, so they don't get the cheese. So there's what you call shallow breathers. The fact that you don't even breathe properly affects everything else. So, what was that? Somebody said something? You breathe from your belly, not from your chest. Right. Now, the people that breathe okay and whose minds are okay don't don't, are not involved enough in sex. We have a lot of, what is this word? Uh, people that don't have sex, what do they call them? Celebrate. Thank you. We have a lot of people that are celibate in our community. Why? Because brothers and sisters can't seem to get together. Why are you laughing? Tell me why. Tell me what's funny. You said people that are masturbators? Did you guys hear that? He said something about, oh, the masturbators. Okay. I guess that is kind of funny. But a lot of our people, brothers and sisters, can't even come together anymore. There are so many single sisters out here and so many single brothers out here. It's ridiculous to me, especially in the conscious community. And it is the spell. And then you have the people that are having all kinds of sex, but their minds are messed up. <laughs> so it's very, it's very um, complicated to find in our community people whose minds are together, meaning they're not too hung up on the spell, that also breathe deeply and breathe properly and participate in so-called sex. If any one of those three things is messed up, everything else about you is messed up. Okay? Now, <laughs> what's wrong? <laughs> Pro, okay. Let me give you give let me give you some information on breathing. And I I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I don't I might have time. Because the sister did ask me to give you guys a particular breathing technique. I have an extremely, and it's not mine, okay? Not, nothing I'm telling you is my stuff. I have an extremely powerful breathing technique that if, if we have time at the end, and y'all don't let me forget, you know, he gonna I'll share it with you. No. You can't do that now. Just have to give you that. <laughs> <laughs> do it, do it. a long time from now. Do it now. I need to be able to think so I can hear what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we should have made copies of that. Let me see if I can find my uh, breathing notes here. <laughs> Y'all actually want to stop right now and start breathing? <laughs> yes, sir. That's also a match. 
It is magic. Because you can pull stuff from out of the spirits from around to the physical. Yes, you can. I like him. <laughs> Y'all really need to have that brother do a lecture. Seriously. <sighs> See, the only thing is, okay, okay. How many people want to stop now and do this breathing? I'm raising my hand. For well, I, I don't see. I need to see your hands go up. How many people want to hold it till the end? Okay, we'll hold it till the end. When we get up, don't let me forget. <laughs> don't let me forget. All right. Breathing and prolonging your breath or getting the capacity to hold your breath at longer intervals will lead to supernormal powers. And when you're melanated, you will become more supernormal than others. When they talk about Superman, how many people have ever seen this, this show that comes on television called Smallville? Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody here never seen Smallville or Superman? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. I know Superman. Yeah. Anybody here never seen Su Superman? They got a movie coming out in Minnesota. <laughs> okay. I'm going just, to just give you guys this. Can I erase this? Yeah. I mean, we know, I think we know that Jess, I guess he's like a young Superman or something. Who is Superman? Yeah. Who is Superman? Yeah. No. Who is Superman? Yeah. Oh, Cal I am. Who is his dad? Joel. Joel. What have the Moors been telling you guys? What are the last names of the Moors? Five. Ali. Cal, Bay, and Day. Mm -hmm. Now they couldn't make Cal L, Cal Ali, because y'all would have figured that out real quick. <laughs> so his name is Cal L. And Jor L, remember J, I, and Y are the one and the same. Who's that? Who's your L? Your L! Your L. Your L. Your L. Your L. Your L. Okay? <coughs> the Smallville and, and Superman shows tend to, it's hard to get with those because they made Cal L a European dude. But from what I, what I comprehend, from what I remember, what I recall, the very first Superman comic was written by a brother about brothers. It wasn't the first DC comic. You know, Europeans have a good way of getting their hands on things that are ours and making them theirs. So now DC Superman comic is supposed to be created by whoever. But it was a brother that created the first Superman comic about a brother. You guys are Superman. There's a book out. Who's this book by a brother called Superman to Man? Y'all need to get that. Superman to Man. You're Superman. You're Supreme Man. And you fall into man, but you ain't. Mankind. Thank you. Somebody was paying attention yesterday. <laughs> you ain't mankind. Yo, there was a comic book a couple, what, a couple years? What, I guess a couple, two decades ago, Superman versus Muhammad Ali. <laughs> yeah. Muhammad yeah. Ali yeah. was a Superman. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking, yeah. Of super, yeah. speaking of Muhammad Ali, that was a brother that showed you every time you saw him how to speak a reality into existence. Right. Right. If he told you you were going down in two, you was going down in two. <laughs> that brother would say, I'm the baddest, I'm the prettiest, I'm the smartest. Who has to be convinced of your power? You. Who has to convince you of your power? Yeah. That has to come from you. Once you convince yourself that you are all that in a bag of chips, you are all that in a bag of chips. I don't care what everybody else is talking about. Other people can say whatever they want, but if your mind is blown up to here, your brain is, I'm, I'm going to tell you as a, as a hypnotherapist, your mind is hardwired. It is required to respond to your voice above and beyond anyone else's. You have the power to program and reprogram your mind. If you do not, and you fail to give it orders and instructions, then other people will give it orders and instructions. So, now that you're clear on words, go home and start creating some audio cassette recordings and playing them over and over at night while you're sleeping. Give you, 
I need a whole lot more money than I currently yeah. have. Okay. Thank you. Come on. Parliament program and reprogram. And you should use the word need. Something like, huh? You should use the word need. You can use the word need. Could you look it up? You can use one. See, because th this is the problem with this is the problem with melanated people. What do most melanated people say when they need more money? You talk to them, and they say things like, you know, like for example, if y'all are getting ready, if a bunch of people are getting ready to go to a concert or a party, and they come across somebody they would like to go, and this person doesn't have the finances to go, what do they usually say? I can't go. I don't have, you know, I don't have enough money, or I can't afford it. What they should be saying is, well, I would really like to go, but I need a whole lot more money than I'm currently told to make this trip. It's all in what you say. They're say either way, you're saying the same thing, but one way, you're telling your brain, I can't and I don't. So right. your brain goes, okay, I can't, I don't. It's just that's that. what it does. No, seriously. If you say, I would love to go, and you do, um, but I need a whole lot more money than, than I have at the moment in order to go. Then your brain goes, okay, I would love to go, but I need, a, and it, 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 you might be surprised, you go in the closet and find $20 or $50 in the pocket that you didn't know was there because you spoke it out. Blocking the blessings. Okay. No, not blocking. <laughs> well, he, you know, it takes a minute for this stuff to to register. About, but they're right. You're not blocking no blessings. Okay. And I don't know how I got off out there. Blocking the energy. But we were talking about breathing. Breathing and holding your breath for longer retentions will will cause you to become a super normal individual. It will enhance your power. It will begin to destroy diseases. And it will lead to, who was talking about telepathy earlier? Where's that brother? Yeah. It will lead to the capacity to, to, uh, to in, uh, interact tele telepathically. It will increase your powers of clairvoyance. It will increase your powers of clairaudience, destroy physical weaknesses, and it will burn up old karma. Did yes. The capacity to retain a breath. Oh, okay. For longer intervals, which comes with practice and time. Talk to the martial artist there. Expanding your breathing, breathing deeper and deeper and deeper in the abdomen and being able to hold the breath for longer and longer retentions. See, the thing that we study in Bagua is that, first of all, I can't go to the lecture, I can see you one, one, one end to the other end. First of all, we're breathing at a beast, we're breathing 18 minutes per minute, which is breathing, breathing like this. That's a beast. That's the, that's the problem. <laughs> the way we want to breathe is breathe in 30 seconds in and 30 seconds out at all times. That's the master of breathing we're trying to get to. Okay, did y'all write that down? Sounds like a, like a tidbit. Anytime somebody's giving you, just because just an individual's not up here at the podium, doesn't mean they're not dropping something unique. <laughs> All right. One must know that the improper flow of energy is the cause of most of the mental and emotional problems that you have. So those of you that are stressed out and on antidepressants and the whole nine, this is what's going on. Your energy is not flowing properly through your chakra centers through your breathing and through the, well, the Milano sites, you really can't control that, but it, it's, it, everything is affected, okay? Um, the effect of these problems is neurotic, psychotic, criminal, and sexually perverted behavior. Those are the things that, be, that begin to occur with people that have these different blockages. So, um, the lotus petals that I was talking about earlier that they call the chakras, those are feminine symbols. That's what I'm saying. I'm getting ready to start uh, probably tacking on. The sisters are going to love this. The brothers are going to be like, oh, shoot. I'm ready to go. <laughs> These are feminine symbols. And the reason they're feminine symbols is because the lotus has threefold nature, like women. 
And it's very similar to the uh, enlightenment phases of man. It's three-part evolution. First, the lotus has its roots in the muddy soil of earth. The stem of the lotus plant rises up through the water, and the, the, the petals of the lotus sit above the water on top in the air. So it's at all three levels. There's something very similar that can be said about roses, too. And thank you for the roses. Those are some very powerful flowers also. They're multidimensional uh, as far as spiritual. Lotus flowers are um, multi-level, earth, water, air. Roses are multi-dimensional. Now, one of the things that you want to comprehend, was that, what was I saying? Man evolves, uh, that's what I was going to say, in, in these three phases, through matter, then the intellect, then spirit. And another word for spirit is stagnation, superiority, or uh, uh, supremacy. Okay? So you go from stagnation to superiority, and then you go to supremacy. Or you go from matter to intellect to spirit. So we're going from the base of things, and we're evolving up. We're going to get into sexuality in a minute here, um, because it's a part of personal power. Sex can do two things. You should write this down. It can either rejuvenate the individual, or it can debilitate the individual. It depends on whether the individual circulates or expands their sexual energy. Expends, I mean expends. X-E-P-E-X-P-E-N-D-S. So if you circulate your energy, then you're going to evolve. If you expend it, then you're not going to evolve. OK? All beings used to be heavily melanated. Way back in the day, everybody on the planet was melanated. Everybody on the planet was what they would call a type of female. Have you told them this yet? Yeah. No, Amari, and one of the Bible said the Bible says that. Well, no, yeah, the Bible um, seminar that he gave was last week. I think. Now, I'm just wondering if you've mentioned it. Yeah. Okay. Back in the ancient days, all beings were melanated and what would be classified a female, but they were androgynous hermaphroditic. They had both a womb and an extended clit that was in the form of a phallus. They were more feminine because of the fact that they had the womb and breast and could birth and nurse. That's why they were considered female, although they were both male and female. At some point, we split off and became females over here and males over here. That was where the problem started, and we've been having problems since. <laughs> now, I'm getting, ready to, I'm getting ready to give it to you. Um, the ancient original teachers of archaic mysteries were four, mo four mothers called the Wu, W-U. Write this down. Huh? Woo. Somebody knows. I hear. I heard a sister say she know about it. Clinical psychology is where you learned it. Okay, look where she learned it in clinical psychology. In the what is that? European schools. Know it, huh? They do know also, it. But I also had uh, the type of parents that uh, did a little other things that was indigenous. Well, that's what I'm talking about? Yeah, there you go. See? Mm -hmm. Now, the Wu were female shaman and priestesses. Can I erase any portion of this? Yes. Yeah. Now, to me, Woo, if you stick a mirror here, then you have this. Moo or Mo. Right? Now, the secrets of sex are the secrets of women. 
and men think they know everything <laughs> when it comes to freaking sex. And women can't tell you anything because you just don't want to hear it, so they don't tell you anything. And a lot of times they want to tell you things and don't know how to tell you things because your egos just get so far out there in the mix, you know, that you... I, see, sisters are laughing. Am I, sis, ladies, am I lying, brothers? You're not lying, that's right. You're not lying. Oh, okay, I even have a brother that's admitting. Now, they, huh? <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you. They were known as the Eastern, because the brother's talking about the Far East, the Eastern culture and matriarchal mother goddess Hong Shan dynasty. Do I need to write that down? Now, see, the Moors always talk about the Shang Dynasty, the Shang Dynasty. They need to go a little further back. The Hong, excuse me? So what are we going to find information on the Hong Shang? <laughs> it's out there. Go find some books. Go to the library. Get on the internet. Okay. There's some books out on sexuality and sexual magic. Find some sexual magic books. Huh? Okay, they just gave you uh, one particular. Give, them, give it to them again because they didn't hear that. Pascal Beverly Randolph and also the Dial Sexology by Stephen Chang. There you go. All right. The matriarchal mother goddess Hong Shang dynasty was one of shamanism, animism, and matriarchy. Not animalism, animism. Don't get them mixed up. See, that's why this today's lecture was going to be so independent of yesterday's lecture. The people that didn't make it yesterday weren't going to miss yesterday. This is also known as Taoism. The Shang Dynasty, the one that the brothers that are Moors keep banging on, <laughs> was a dynasty of melanated brothers, and they became the dynasty that was known as the Great Yin Dynasty. Yin and not Yang. Yin. Y I N. And it should have been young. I don't know what the, what's the deal. It's probably young, but you gotta remember. This information comes from these pink people's books, and they don't want you to have the whole truth, so it probably is young. No, that would be Y-A-N-G. It, the Shang dynasty that the Moors talk about, that dynasty and Confucianism, which, what does Confucianism sound like? Thank you. Confusionism. That's what it sounds like to me. The Shang Dynasty and the Confucianism Dynasty promoted patriarchal ideals. That's when the madness started. Now, confuse. Oh, now, now, I got to give the brothers this much credit. They weren't beating up the sisters in the Shang Dynasty. They were just promoting penises. However, Confucianism, on the other hand, opposed matriarchy, hated it. And Confucianism is the era that is continuing to this very day. Christianity is where hatred of women and hatred of melanin originated. This is one of the reasons why people that look like you should never touch Christianity with no pole of any kind. Can you be a Christian? It ain't possible. If you're, not, if you're melanated, it's not possible to be a Christian, but you cannot tell your Christian 
grandmother that. Okay. Now, along with almost all religions that are practiced today, these concepts of hating women and hating melanin are still carried forward. This was because of Yanni, which y'all use, a lot of people call the womb, or coochie, or whatever y'all want to use for these funny little names to call it. Okay. And, and later, melanin envy. Coochie envy, melanin envy. That's what it's about. Suckers is jealous. These pink people don't hate you because of whatever you think. They hate you because they're not you. They're jealous. They're afraid of you because they know how powerful you are, and they're jealous because it ain't them. Now, a lot of the same people, pink, and I'm like my sisters tell me, my sisters say this. The pink man who was unfortunately currently ruling over everything is the most disconnected entity on earth right. from the great mother. Right. Sisters are the closest example of the great mother. The melanated mother. Brothers are right there with her. They're melanated too. Pink women are not melanated, but at least they're female. Pink men ain't melanated, ain't female, they ain't connected. So they hate everybody. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Um, we're, we're under the assumption that uh, the Caucasian male is running. He's not. He's giving all respect and honor to his maker, the white female. So the balance between the, black, the woman of color and the woman of no color, while she tries to do you, you stay trying to do her. It's like a dog chasing the stick. I want to be like you, but I can't tell you who you are. She injected her lips, skin, hips, doing her hair. She's going to be you. The idea is to come back and replace you so that when the blessing comes, they'll get it and you'll reject them. We emanate them as well. That's what he just said. They're trying to be us, we're trying to be them. Because all these sisters got this blonde hair. And that's fine if there's some conscious brain under there. If you're just doing it as a fashion statement. But some of these sisters are blind and with no brain. Don't have a clue what you're talking about. Um, but these people are jealous. Now, penis envy is a word game that's thrown out there to throw everybody off. Women are not, don't have penis envy. Sisters have penis frustration. <laughs> now y'all don't get it twisted. We don't envy your penis. We just get frustrated with y'all in them things sometimes. Because y'all seem to think that those things are everything and all the thing, and there's more to the thing than that thing. I mean, you know, the sisters may not say much because some of them are probably sitting with their mates. But if they had it, had the chance to say a word, they would let you know. Look, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes you really ain't all that. You know, but I love you anyway because of other things. The brothers think it's this thing here that makes them the thing. There's so much more to you guys than that. If only you had a freaking, well, those of you here now, you have a clue. But if most of these brothers out here had a clue who they are and what they're dealing with and what they're walking with, there's so much more power to them than what's between their legs that it really is ridiculous that they rationalize it down to something so small. And as big as it is, it's small <laughs> in comparison to what y'all really got going on. Now, I got to say that women have no need to envy the penis. Eugeration has to be a two-way exchange, which means that the woman being fulfilled is all important in order for her to give the power of her essence to her man. Because once she has, once she is what you call um, <laughs> satisfied, then she, who's laughing? <laughs> once she is satisfied, she has the capacity to secure you and put you in a protective energy cloak, an energy ball. And a lot of sisters do it without even realizing that they're doing it. How many of you guys know sisters and brothers that are married and have something like 10 and 12 <laughs> children? 
Does anybody know anybody that had a nation? <laughs> or a tribe? Yeah. Yeah. Most of those brothers, most of those brothers, unlike their single comrades, have all of these children and somehow they still manage to feed everybody. Somehow they manage to have their job and stay on this job and their single brothers can't get no jobs, mm -hmm. getting kicked off the jobs and fired and whatever. And these same brothers that have these tribes, for lack of better word, because the word tribe really is a European word. We don't have tribes, they're tribal. But for lack of better words, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that. How about little nations? They have their little nations in the community. These same brothers are the same brothers that you know that got all kind of attitude. Don't let the police stop some of these brothers. Have you guys ever seen these brothers I'm talking about get stopped by the police? Mm -hmm. They talk to them cops like they were in two and four tails. And what happens to them usually? Nothing. Why is it that these brothers that have all these children that are with the same woman since forever <laughs> can keep a job and hold it down and feed their whole family and not go in and out of jail, and in and out of jail, and in and out of jail, and back and forth on unemployment like a lot of their single comrades. Has anybody ever even wondered? Mm -hmm. Have you ever noticed before today? Yes. yes. That is because these brothers have the capacity to satisfy their woman and she protects them. She has a ball of power around that brother so he can just do whatever, whatever. He might even cheat on her on occasion, but he still comes home with love and respect for his mate. And she may even know that he cheats on occasion, but there's still love and respect in the relationship. Nobody is in a situation, they're not in a situation where every time you look up, she got two black eyes and big old lips because he's beating the hell out of her, or he's always drunk and beating up the children. They are in a loving, respectful relationship. So when they get together, she protects him. These single brothers don't have the protection. That's why they can't get the jobs. They're in and out of jail and always in trouble, keep getting stopped all the time. They're not protected. Now, do you need me to stop while you flip? <laughs> OK. One of the things that these individuals understand uh, you know what, maybe they don't understand it. They may not. See, sis, there, there are some brothers that are kind of single, that also do OK. But even though they're single, they have some sister out there that's got a, that they're messing around with, that's got a protection around them. Now, if you keep it, if you, if you think about, I'm, I'm going to have you think about yourself and some relationship you may have been in where things were going relatively well for you and you were involved in some loving, respectful relationship. And things were okay as far as your finances were okay. and You know, you may have been living with the sister or not. But at some point when you guys broke up, especially if you broke up badly, all of a sudden, all hell seemed to break loose in your life. <laughs> Do any brothers in here remember anything like that ever happened? Yeah. Only one? Two. Bunch of liars. Yep. <laughs> you know it. Oh, okay. the, what it is is this. When you break up with your sister that has you protected somehow, and you'll know who she was because you'll know that for some reason the police weren't really bothering you when you were with the sister. For whatever reason, you were doing okay. But when you broke up with the sister, if you broke up badly, a sister will do this. What the hell with you, nigga? Yeah. That kind of thing. Curse you. And no, it's not that she cursed you. What she did without knowing it is she cut her life from you. She severed the tie that bound you. A lot of sisters will have this problem with their sons, too. Their sons will be protected. They don't even know they're doing it. There are a lot of sisters that just, you know, they, they, they know they got to keep something going on on their sons. But sometimes, in some instances, you will have some sons that will decide one day, he knows more than his mama, he's smarter than her, he's bigger and badder than her. And she might say, the hell with you, boy, get out. And then she'll ch -ch -ch, sever the protective tie. Next thing she hears, you know, did you hear about your son? He's in jail. It's because she cut her security from the brother. I'm saying this to say to you brothers, even if you're going to break up with a sister that has you protected, and the one you have may or may not have you protected, 
If she always high, always drunk, and this and that, she ain't got too much of nothing going on around you because she don't have a lot going on around herself. But if she, even if she's stuck in Christianity, she may still have a protective light around you. If and when you decide you want to break up with her, you don't want to break up badly because as long as she has love for you, she will still have compassion and concern for your well-being and still have a certain amount of protective light around you until she sees that you are with a better woman. Then she'll cut it off. Sister, do I, does this make any sense to any of the sisters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the brothers are sitting up looking like that. <laughs> yes. Okay, now what can a male do that say like, if the male, let's, let's say like I got kids, what can I do to protect my children if my other yesterday woman is, is, is not doing so? I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I don't have all the answers. I give you the ones I got. Anybody can help this brother out? Or around his own his, his own kids. There's a nature woman is close to me. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I imagine it's possible. I imagine so. It's, it's it also was, a mental thing, isn't it? Yeah. It's a womb thing. The womb has a certain kind. Of, the womb is like a little bell hanging there. It's like a, it's, 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 it's hanging on these little things, these little tendon things, and it's kind of like a little swingy thing. And it's got this whole frequency going on. And this is all. Well, I erased it. Shoot. I was gonna say this is almost what it looked like. The womb looked a lot like this thing that I just erased. Yeah. I'm trying to draw it back where it was. Mm -hmm. Looks a lot like that. It's hanging, it's hanging by what? It's hanging by these little, 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 little thin core things. It's, it's over. It's not the fallopian tubes. They're attached, but it, what, it's suspended by some other little tendons or something. And it swings within the body. It's, it, yeah, it's all, it, yeah. You know, it, it, it has, a, you know, the canals and things come down here. But it's like a little bell. And it's, it's verberating and vibrating frequency all the time. 24-7 is on a frequency. I can't describe it. Yes. <laughs> it's a womb thing. But, go ahead. That was a lecture given by Reverend Valentine. And I think that was brought up. Okay. About women uh, straddling horses. Uh, uh, you know, because they used to ride them side saddle. Mm -hmm. You know, I say by, by them changing it and straddling bikes and straddling horses and whatnot, it damages them. That might be true. That's how, that makes sense to me. If Brother Phil said it damages it, it damages it. That brother's dick. He know what he be talking about. <laughs> now, you talking about Valentine, right? Phil right, Valentine, right? right? Valentine, right. Wounded, wounded, wounded. Phil Valentine is no joke. If that brother gives you some research, because people that do lectures are only people that read and research and come back and stand in front of the group and give an oral report to a bunch of people that would rather not do the reading. That's all it is, an oral report of my findings. Phil gets lots of findings. And any time you get your hands on any research from Phil Valentine, you definitely want to take that to heed, take that to heart. Okay? Now. Back to where we're. I think it might be possible for brothers to do it. I don't know how, but I'm sure it's possible. I think if a brother is, even though he doesn't have a womb, if he is a very cognizant brother, what some people call conscious, and that's not the correct word because you can be conscious and not know nothing. I mean, you know, you know what I'm saying when I say conscious? There are people standing out here at the bus stop that are conscious. That means you're awake. That you, you're up and you're walking around and you can walk and talk. That you're not, asleep, you're not physically asleep. That's conscious. But to be cognizant, which means to know and be uh, uh, on point, if the brother is cognizant and fully aware of the power of his melanin and is man enough to be woman, then he can do it. And most men are not man enough to get in touch enough with their feminine side That's to right. let their woman come out at all. That's true. Because they feel that it's... it's well, they've been told that it's, it's, it's pussy-ish, punkish. Yeah. 
Yes. And that data level. Well, yes. Why right, did you just say about you get a husband the feminine side and then the act of sexual magic? See, because whatever you pull, you can pull down whatever you need from out of that realm as far as protection or what have you, depending on the position that you and that female is in when you're in the act. There you go. She can dominate him. Or he can dominate her. See, y'all don't have to. I mean, it's more powerful when you're on the same vibration. Mm -hmm. But let's just say he's on top of her. That he's putting his mindset into her. If she's on top, then it's working vice versa. See, it's, it's, it's who's using it. So you need to get with this brother if you want to protect your sons, brothers. He can give you some, he can give you some keys or at least give you a book. I'm going to you, let you get into your lecture. Okay, yes. When you create a you be more Creativity is one of the ways to tap into that. We can't hear what he's saying. He's saying when you're being creative, aren't you tapping into your femininity? And I said, well, if you're being creative, that's one way to tap into it. And he said, well, a lot of brothers are creative. And that's good that you are, but when you look around the world, I don't see a lot of brothers that are being creative and creating. I see a lot of brothers that are mm -hmm. hanging out and chilling and trying to figure out and figure it out. Some brothers begging for jobs. Some brothers have jobs, they go to work every day, but create what? Right. It's a difference, create. You know, when you say creative, many brothers can't show you the artwork that they drew or the, the, the jury box or the cabinet that they built. Brothers used to be creative until somebody told them that the tra those people that had trades and blue collar things were less than those that had professional white collar type jobs. Mm -hmm. So brothers that had the trade crafts, a lot of them gave it up. Being competitive. They were shut out. Well, some instances they became shut out, but if you had a trade, can how can anybody that. shut you up? Right on. If you, if you got a job, you can get shut out all day. Right. If you can build something, you can find somebody to buy what you built. Yes. Or trade something for what you built. Right. Or drew or crafted or created. <laughs> Even if it ain't your own people that will right. buy it. You can find somebody that will pay you for your wares. Right. We used to make shoes. Brothers used to make shoes. They used to do glass work. They used to do woodwork. They used to do artwork. In Jamaica they still do, but Europeans have come over there and kind of infiltrated. And a lot of their wares aren't getting out to the communities that have the money to spend unless a tourist shows up. And then tourists will show up and buy the wares. But they have to wait for the tourists to show up. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of brothers have creative capacity, but they're not tapping into it and creating with it. And unfortunately, a lot of the young brothers that want to learn these trades, the handful of older brothers out there that have the trades won't even pass them down. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, man, I ain't going to teach you that. They refuse to pass it down. Every other culture passes down the trade works except melanated people. We don't want to teach our children anything, but we want to talk about them all the time and complain about them and beat them up verbally all the time and call them a bunch of losers when you made them losers by passing nothing down to them. Right. It's your fault as adults. Okay, so back to the point. We're back to where we were. Um, all right, now. When I say that, you know, the, the woman protects the man, I'm saying this to say it's not enough for the man to just get his jolly rocks off. <laughs> okay? By ejaculating his semen and overlooking the needs of the womb he just spit in. It doesn't have anything to do with coming or not coming other than when a brother is coming he wants to try to hold his semen in and, and, and shoot the frequency up as opposed to spitting the, uh, the unless he's trying to make babies, mm -hmm. instead of spitting the semen out. It's more about a body that's weak and a being that's in low spirit in particular, mm -hmm. those individuals should retain their semen and not spit it out so much. And unfortunately, when it comes to my brothers, many brothers are in low spirit. And, and in weak body. Are you talking about eject, uh, ejaculation? E ejaculation. Not ejaculation. Okay, at which point? Because right now I just got to talking about ejaculation. Are you talking about before when I said shooting it up? That's ejaculation. Yeah, ejaculation. Okay. Like yeah. 
Yes. What assist the brothers that you talk to and the ones that don't know is it takes three pints of your blood to make one tablespoon of semen. Woo, the brother said it takes three pints of your blood, brothers, to make one teaspoon. How much? Tablespoon. One tablespoon. One tablespoon. One tablespoon. One tablespoon. One tablespoon. One Three pints of your blood to make one teaspoon of semen to spit out. And this is why you know in, in, a, in a long lasting relationship between a man and a woman, she'll start to resemble him. That's right. Because she's she been he been feeding her his blood. Right. And in return, what she'll also do is she'll live longer than him. Because she stops to eat, but he won't. Oh, God. Now that was deep. Did y'all hear that? Or do we need to repeat that? Re repeat that. Repeat that. Repeat that. Okay, they want you to stand up and say that again and say that loud enough. Point the camera. Can we point the camera at you or you don't want your face on camera? What I'm saying is... Say it louder so it can be heard. Whenever the brother ejaculates instead of injaculates, it takes three pints of your blood to make that little teaspoon of semen. See, in the back, and you'll notice it because the first thing you'll do is you'll roll up and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what happens when you do a blood transfusion. You, you can't do nothing else. See, and then the longer you with this woman, if y'all not having children, but you keep on bleeding. You keep on bleeding. You don't think of it like that because nobody ever told you. And then she outlives you. Because you've been feeding her your blood all the time. And that's why that's she's starting to resemble you. Like, oh, yeah, y'all look like brother and yeah, sister. Yeah, you know? Yeah, we're not from the same family, but, but, but we are. <laughs> I've been giving her my blood. So in return, since I can't stop bleeding, she's going to take 20 years from my life. And she's going to outlive me by 20 years. Now that was deep. Now the lingam or phallus very easily absorbs sexual secretions through its head. <laughs> the phallus, which is also called a lingam. Remember I told you guys yesterday that it's called a lingam? When I was telling you when I was telling you about language. <laughs> language when I was telling you about language or linga itch, we're in the linga age of language. That's what's wrong. The linga will very easily absorb sexual secretions through its head. The yani absorbs secretions through the walls and the womb. Then the yani will transform the secretions of both partners and then give potency to the partner if she knows what she's doing. And if she's not on drugs, alcohol, or too much pork. Mm -hmm. Too much meat. No, that's right. Okay? Now, failure to absorb, transform, and then return power essence to the man by keeping it all to herself puts the woman in the category of what the brother was just talking about, which is being nothing more than a vampire mm -hmm. that will milk the man <laughs> of his essence without the benefit of a two-way exchange. See, a lot of people don't know about that stuff. Yeah. See, if you got a guy that's, 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 that's ejaculating in you and he doesn't know about or you don't know how to tell him about ejaculating, as you call it, then you have to know how to give him the energy back, you know, during that transformation. And a lot of sisters don't either know how or don't do it. I'm going to assume don't know how. They don't know about Right. Now, when it comes to men, before any man ejaculates, he must consider the state of his psyche and the strength of his body, the fatigue of his body. That's why a lot of times sisters, when they're with guys and they can see the brother is not the ones that even have a clue. They may not even know cognizantly or consciously that they perceive a problem, but they'll tell a brother, oh, that's all right, baby, we don't do nothing tonight. Some of these brothers just want to keep on going. <laughs> and the sister can see that you're not quite there, but you still want to go, so, okay, let's go. <laughs> you know, and if, if she has a clue how to give you anything back, she can give you something back, but it's not good when you're tired 
or when you are not healthy to ejaculate. Okay? <coughs> now, that's not for everybody. No. The sister was saying the best time is just before sun up, and I was telling her that's not for everybody. Different individuals are on different clocks. Mm -hmm. Now, suppression of semen should never be excessively prolonged, what the brother is talking about. Now, if a couple is in accord and they're mutually attuned, then the ejaculation or the holding of the semen should be spontaneous. And even if both individuals are not cognizant of the science, as long as at least one, like he was saying, as long as, long as at least one of you is, then you can work the science. So if, you, if the sister knows and the brother has no idea, she can still do what she needs to do. If the brother knows and the sister has no idea, he can still do what he needs to do. It's better if you both have a clue, but again, sometimes some people you can't tell them anything about sex. They just don't want to hear it. They'll be like, look, I've been running around for 20 some years. I know what to do. I know what to do. I know how to pick one up. You know? So, um, let me think here how much more I want to give you guys of this. You were talking about, <clears throat> talking about the chakras. There's a good book out, uh, The Astral Body and the Etheric Body, I think by E. Powell. They give you color charts that show the auras in the egg formation and it show you in developing clairvoyancy how you can see these things in other people. Okay, thank you. Um, when people yoke together, which some people call having sex, when you yoke together or you when you couple up and you start this gyrating motion or whatever it is that you do in the bed, you create heat and steam. And the heat and steam radiates from the bodies of the individual in a cone of power over the two individuals. I didn't even ask, but I erased this. OK, here's a bed. A couple of folks on it. <laughs> They're generating heat. <laughs> I know, I'm not the best artist. I do stick figures. <laughs> There's two good books over here on that subject for both male and female, and that's by Mantai Chia. One is called Dallas of Love, Cultivating Female Sexual Energy, and the other one is Flip Side of Cultivating Male Sexual Energy. So that's that's good love. And it's called Dallas of Love? Right. Yeah, it's called Dallas. Spell that. T-A-O. Oh, that's what I said, Dallas, and then you said, no, it's called. No, no. Okay. Cultivating male sexual energy and also cultivating female. Cultivating male sexual energy and cultivating female sexual energy. By Chia? Mantak Chia. Mantak Chia. Okay, that's. M A N T A K? C H I A. That's the author. Saying that because it's on, I want it on the DVD. Um, anyway, the, these individuals create a cone of power over the two of them. It is a whirling, spiraling vortex of psychic force that the two individuals release outside of themselves. Now, inside of themselves, they also have rising, swirling energies of the snakes. Um, producing, producing an ascending vortex of individual power in each of them that is used in ta ta Tantra for personal transformation called the uh, little, what do they call them, the little Kundalini's? Okay, that, that's too high up. The head's supposed to be somewhere in here. <coughs> nose is supposed to be in here somewhere. Yeah, also, uh, something you might find hard to get, but uh, um, Jewel Pumpkin has a, put out a little book like that on that, on that subject for, for black people specifically, though. Okay. Yeah, Jewel Pumpkin does have a lot of powerful information out about sex and sexuality. Y'all would want to try to get some of her information. If you can get her, well, she's, uh, if you can get her here, that wouldn't be a bad thing. I just got a number. 
Okay. What you were speaking of earlier about the yin dynasty. Mm-hmm. Shang. The Shang in, in the yin for the brothers, you know, the more. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is the stuff that Bruce Lee brought over here to teach. Because his first students were more. See, and this is why they had to cut him off because he was giving you back your your your, your lineage. He was mm-hmm. giving you back with our science. That's our science. That's why they killed him. But what do they have people doing in Christianity? Abstaining. Sexuality is looked down on in Christianity, isn't it? Yes. Keep your legs closed, keep your dress down. <laughs> I mean, you know, back in the day, it was all about that. But, you know, we're on some new stuff now. And what do we say about new? Ain't true. New. Yeah, so we want to find out what was ancient. Anytime people start talking about ancient, they're talking about you and your ancestors, Ankh Esters. Everything that was ancient was about you guys. Europeans were not even around then, and I still say they're not a thousand years old. I know a lot of people think, oh, they've been around a few thousand years. No, I disagree. No, yeah. I think they've only been around a few hundred years. I don't think they're a whole thousand years old. That's just, the, the evidence just don't show it. Also, when they speak about prime primitive, as you said earlier, and primordial, you're talking about you too. They, they, they're not a part of that family. Either. Yeah, they're not a part of much, primate except family, destruction. Primate family. They took the worst characteristics of us and been beating the planet down with our worst side. So, these snaking energies are Pingala, which is the male on the right, and Ida which is the female on the left, and they both intertwine around Shushumna, which runs up the center of the spine, or in the center of the spinal area. Raising and evolving this kundalini energy, or circular power, known as the sleeping goddess, brings Sidi, which is also known as great paranormal power. Now, these intentional acts are magical, and they have potency. This is how psychic protection is conferred on oneself and on one's lover. Yes? And like you just described about the, um, the, the left side being feminine and the right side being masculine. People is left-handed, by the way, because all, all of your organs line up on the left.